did. I'm not even going to try to get you guys to do jazz hands because nobody ever does jazz hands with me. I do too, you lions. So, I, don't, I don't see it. I don't see jazz hands going. Come on, let's see. Kevin's definitely not doing it. Jazz, sure. jazz hands? Oh, oh, there you go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Welcome back <laughs> to the Big Daddy Gun Studio. We're live. I'm Hank Strange. It's time to put your big girl panties on. We've got <laughs> Kevin Dixie of NOC Firearms Training as well as Walter Keller from Safety Harbor Firearms. And as I said, we are live in the Big Daddy Gun Studio. And it's kind of like a free for all Monday. So we're just talking about whatevs. Stuff. Yeah, stuff. Whatever you guys want to talk about, whatever we want to talk about. Um, I do want to take this time for everyone who's with us now. Please share that we're doing this on Facebook or Twitter, whatever you have, social media, share it up so that we can get more people to come in here. I also want to remind everyone, as I usually do on Mondays, that we've just posted five more episodes to iTunes. So I think we're up to episode 30 on iTunes. So that way you can listen to it on iTunes, as well as Podbean, as well as you can go to the Hank, to uh, hankstrange.com and listen to this while you're in your car, in the bathtub, you know. No. Whatever you do. In the bathtub? Bathtub. Oh, <laughs> It's believe. sexiness. If you need, if you need to hear three <laughs> sexy dudes <laughs> while you're in the bathtub, I <laughs> know for some reason you no, don't know. There dude. might be some. There might be some ladies that listen to this. That might oh, be, I'm, I'm sure there is. Like you yeah. know, but and they might feel the desire to listen <laughs> to some sexy voices. Hello there, baby. <laughs> What's up? So make sure you put your deepest voice on. Hey. Make sure you go deep. All Welcome. right. So, uh, strange so, <laughs> so it's Monday. I think let's let's start with Kevin. Kevin, what have you been up to this weekend, man? Which what's been going on with you? Oh man, Hank, it was um it was a great weekend. We had the the first annual aiming for the truth event, you know, citing in on the real issues of violence and how we can correct that kind of uh correct the trend by reducing it. It's only correct direction for it to go. Uh, so we put on an event. Uh, it was great. We had a, a turnout that, of course, I wanted more. You know, anytime you organize something, you want to uh, blow out the walls. But, you know, we had about 60 people inside. We had about uh, 30 people outside sharing the knowledge. So uh, it was great, man. We hooked them up with all kind of resources. I won't go too long. It was um, mental health uh, resources there for people, employment. We actually got a few people jobs this weekend. Uh, we help cool. people out with um, uh, budgeting their money, finances, how to create generational wealth. Uh, we help people with uh, with family building. We had a charter school that actually came to the event. Yes, a school came to a gun friendly event and uh, helped enroll people in their uh, uh, in for their child's education. Uh, so it was a great thing. I mean, we helped so many different dynamics. Uh, we even added in uh, if you had a drug abuse problem. We actually had a, a guy there helping out with that. Uh, we had a lawyer on site to help you get risky rid of any of those pesky traffic warrants that are preventing you from getting your concealed carry permit or you got any bigger issues. They were there offering advice. So, I mean, you name it, we talked about the history of gun control and what it really is. Uh, so when I got you all amped about taking care of your family, being a better person, rebuilding the union, uh, reducing violence, being financially aware, getting employment, uh, then I introduced people to the gun community. So we had some competition shooters, Alien Armory, they came in with their shooting team and pre pre presented people with a safe place to come shop and into the competition world. So people knew what that was. Uh, then we talked about uh, gun control and while it's important that you fight against it so you can protect everything we just helped you build. And uh, a huge shout out to those guys and a bigger shout out uh, even to uh, Darren Lasort and NRA TV. They came and documented the entire thing. Um, oh, cool. Excellent. Yeah, it was real nice to have those guys come in. Uh, they were all over it as soon as they heard about it. Uh, Darren's a, a top notch guy. Uh, he came in, he, uh, he talked to some of the people, shared his knowledge. Um, he listened to me the entire time. He listened to all the present uh, the presenters. Uh, then, of course, after that, we talked how to make it better, and then we uh, we went out to the range and had some uh, some guy gun time. So it was a it was a good time, man. Good time. Okay, that's cool. Um, very important to me was their food. There was <laughs> free food, and you want to hear a funny story about that? Yeah, yeah. I want to uh, hear about food. <laughs> uh, we had um we had a free childcare was part of the event, so we had a oh nice for the kids. Um, so our, the, the adults were inside getting an education. We had the kids outside in the bounce house. We had a snow cone machine, um, cotton candy, uh, hot dogs, chips, juice, water. Um, so a funny thing about that was the kids all came and had a good time. So some of the neighborhood kids uh, wound up just kind of wandering over and kind of a sad story. A lot of them, you know, and unfortunately hadn't ate in a little while. 
Uh, uh, so we allow okay. them to come over and bounce in the bounce house and get a snow cone and get a hot dog. And, you know, even if their parents didn't bring them to the event, we still allow the kids to have a good yeah. time. Uh, Absolutely. And then, had, uh, then where it got really interesting, <laughs> uh, bless their heart, where it got really interesting is we had um, a lot of um, street entrepreneurs in the, um, the adult <laughs> business. Um, in that, the, adult, uh, the adult street entrepreneurs? Adult entrepreneurs. Uh, in uh -huh. adult entertainment. Should I translate that to uh, hookers? You can. There you go. Um, I said it. Uh, not Kevin. I said it. <laughs> working girls. Working girls. Oh, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of them come over. And when they started coming over, a lot of the people that worked with them came over. Then some uh, some people, some uh, homeless people actually came over. And so that was the crowd that like filled up the parking lot. And so we were able to kind of talk to them, hook them up with some resources and as well as feed them yeah. um, and show them a good safe time. And we had um. Law enforcement on site too to make sure everybody was safe. So man, it was a it was a great time. Yeah. And, and everyone everyone deserves the right to be able to protect themselves, right? Yes, sir. You know, doesn't matter, you know, who you are for the most part. <laughs> you know, we want everyone to be able to protect themselves. So that that's cool, man. I'm glad that that went down well for you. And how was the NRA TV thing? So you're going to be on NRA TV soon. Yeah, this will be airing on the Noir show. This should be coming oh. on the own show. Um, oh, October. yeah. Excellent. Nice, yeah. nice. October-ish. I'll be sure to keep you guys uh, updated on that. And I'm not sure. Now, Noir, uh, both of them were coming. So Lasorda and Noir was com were coming. Unfortunately, I know uh, Coleon actually put out something leading to it on his Twitter. So blessings out to him and his family. He had a, I'll let him tell what it is, but he had a family emergency that has now went well. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so blessings out to him. So that's yeah. all he couldn't make it. Uh, but we're setting a follow-up date to get me and him together to talk about some things. But that's the only reason he wasn't in town. But Darren still was able to um, to show up. We sent Coley on our best to him and his family, and uh, we we made the best of it. Yeah, um, I know. I read from one of his tweets that um, you know some kind of thing was going down. I really don't know what it is, but I'm glad that it's uh, working out. Yeah, you know um, that's definitely a good thing. So Walter, yes, sir. Walter, yes. What were you up to this weekend? Oh, just doing normal stuff around the house. Not, not okay. nothing, nothing too uh, gun exciting. Okay. Uh, not like some weekends where it's shooting all weekend. But um, yeah. Do you have? I see Chris Bullis is asking if anyone else has kids that's going back to school. Do you? I think you do because I know I do. <laughs> yeah, my son is a senior this year in high school. Yeah, mine so, too. Mine yeah. too. Okay. And so um, it'll be interesting. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Kevin? Do you have uh, kids going back to school? Yeah, my daughter um, is already back in school. She's been in school for about two weeks now. Uh, my oh, son. What? Yeah, she's. Holy cow! I'm, man, look, the, the school she's a part of it is it is awesome. Um, okay. And they believe in starting early and getting these kids into the curriculum. They 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 really present on the fact that by the time regular kids are back in school, our kids are already deep into their curriculum. Yeah. Um. Then my son is taking a big leap this year. He is going into middle school. Middle school. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Yeah. first year middle yeah. school. Yeah. So you're not like you're not. I mean, Walter and I, we've got like one each going into high school. Are you scared, Walter? Scared? No, going into high school. You wouldn't. My. I mean, not going into high school. Going into the the precious, highly acclaimed office of senior. Oh yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> senior in high school. Uh, well, and, and when my, you know, I remember back when I was a senior. My son, my son turns eighteen next month. Mm -hmm. So back when I was in high school. Like how long ago? The when I was a, when I when I when I was a <laughs> when I was a senior in 1979, wow. 19, 1980. Okay. Wow. Um, the legal drinking age in Florida was 18. So party on, Garth. Party on, Wayne. Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Florida had to make sure we can. You know, we had, someone's got to buy the liquor. <laughs> someone's I mean, got. Someone's got to make Florida famous. <laughs> luckily, my son's not that way at all. And I, I was all just a weekend warrior, but um. Yeah, but yeah, I was you know in high school and eighteen years old, do what you want, you know. And, yeah, I don't yeah. think high school nowadays really goes like is how it was back in the eighties. But they used to smoke in school. Not it, they had in the courtyard in the high school. You could smoke, believe it or not, cigarettes. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. That other stuff was in the yeah. alley behind the school. But yeah, <laughs> okay. I don't know if I even want to know what kind of uh, where where was your high school, Walter? In Tampa. In Tampa, okay. No, it was it was it's a it's how a, was it's, it was it hood? No, no, it's a uppity. It's oh, an uppity high. Uppity? It's, oh. it's, it's, it still is an uppity place. Oh, okay. So um, you want to know something to make you feel real good, man? What's that? 
you graduated the year I was born. If that makes you feel, <laughs> well, that makes you feel good today. Yeah, I knew something like that was coming. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I I wasn't even living in America in 1980. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably still in diapers in 1980. Uh, no, 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 no. Come on now. And let me see. In 1980, I was eight years old. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. So and and you know, I was no. I was pretty badass. When I was eight, yeah, I bet. Yeah, I was. I was, li I was living in Nigeria. I was living in the motherland. I was living in Africa. Okay, <laughs> oh, so oh, I was doing it. I at eight years old. No, not really, but <laughs> I guess I would say that. So you didn't. So that was it, huh? This weekend you were just taking it yeah, easy. Yeah, huh? just hanging. Yeah, yeah just not like not yesterday. Really yesterday went to the shop. Just did some shop stuff. You know. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Sugar Bear was also a time person. <laughs> Sugar Bear, what? Sugar, Sugar Bear, one of our one of our watchers right now. Yeah. He says he was. Let me see. I'm gonna count how many people were saying they were in well, diapers 19, in 1980. 80. Everyone who was in diapers in 1980, just put your hands up. <laughs> right, your hands, yeah. <laughs> put your hands up in the air. So, <laughs> or if, if you're a female, well, anyways, we won't get into that. Um, 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 anyways. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't even know where you're going with that, Walter. No, no, no. no. I'm not even gonna pretend to know. Where are you going yeah. with that? No, no. So while we're, you know, I'm, I'm going to invite everyone out there to like hit us up with questions or news things that are out there that you guys want to talk about. Now, last week, Walter, we yes, were, uh, was it, what day was that? Friday? Was it Friday that we were talking to um, uh, Tim Harmson from Military yeah. Arms Channel yeah. and Patrick R. from the from, Firearm from, Blog? Well, yep. and yeah, the, about, about the pig, the, uh, I just almost the said. The pig. The uh, SIG P320. This that's Max fault that I said that I always because I wasn't messing that up until he started saying it. The pig. Was, yeah. Okay. So the SIG P320. We were talking about that because there was this Dallas Police Department that um, that they I guess they did an interdepartmental recall on it because they were worried right. about it not being drop safe. Right. And I think that was based on the manual, then all of that stuff was getting pulled back. And then Sig was saying that there's no problems with it, that that wasn't in, that that was an old manual. And this whole thing was going back and forth. We'd had, we had Mac from Military um, Arms Channel, Tim Harmson. We had Patrick R on here. We had a good conversation. Some people were mad at us, Walter, because they thought we right. were hating on the Sig P320. Well, so. I, did, I did. I just sat there and for the ride on that one because i i'm completely out of the loop oh. on the sick oh are you trying to indemnify yourself for <laughs> the the one time i didn't express my views you know and because uh -huh. uh, i didn't have any to express so. you still got hate but it wasn't it had nothing to do with well that, but, that's just because yeah. that's, that's hate through association yeah right? hate through association <laughs> and um you know i think that I, I don't think we were really what we were concerned about was the whole process that that um that happened here before the army and all these other people decided right. to jump on the bandwagon. So Kevin, do you, did you hear about this? Yeah, I had, um, we actually up in the shop that I'm on right at, we have a, we have the recall, um, warning right away is hanging up and I was reading over it. And then I read at the same time that Dallas PD had said, you know, they want to take the guns out of service. And after talking to SIG, they, uh, decided to put them back into service. Um, and then I believe it was, um, I might be saying it wrong Omaha outdoors. Uh, yeah, I think today or or over the weekend, Omaha Outdoors. Um, they did a drop they, test. Yeah, yeah they did a drop test. test. And when you drop it on the um, on the hammer. Yeah, when you drop it on the back of the gun, I will use my high point to demonstrate. I'm not, the high point is not loaded, or you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're, you're gonna break gonna, the you're gonna break the floor, man. We're not we're not uh, <laughs> we're not drop testing the the high Wait point. Minute, I got one too. Hang on. Yeah, I just thought I'd pull up my high point because everyone's been showing a high point you're you're high point, huh? on I the show. Yeah. So Ke Kevin has a look of disgust on his face for anyone. Who's I mean, listening. hey, man, it's, 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 it's better than nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, they dropped it like this, and it was going off. So right. they were showing video of that. So that's interesting. And then I think that you've got some other people out there that are testing it. We're waiting to hear back from them. If anyone out there knows or has heard back to see if anyone else is having these problems. I can tell you, I can tell you what, what they went a little bit in detail about what the guys were in there. And they disclaimed, and I'll do a disclaimer for them. They were saying, you know, speculation, but this is what they found. Uh, when they took it out of, when they took the trigger out of the X5, 
and put it into the standard P320, they can do the same drop test and the rate of it, um, the times that it went off during the drops decrease by um, a tremendous percentage. When they put the top trigger back in, it would then fire almost every single time they dropped it on the beaver. Um, so they dropped the X5 so much, they actually broke part of the beaver off of it um, just to make sure they had it right. Uh, so they believe yeah. it's a trigger. Now there's a six ounce difference in the weight of the trigger from the X5 down to the 320. So oh. they are speculating that it has to be weight in the trigger because when they yeah. took some um, part and they added weight back to the X5's trigger to make it more comparable to the standard trigger, the gun would still fire. But when you put the lighter trigger in it, it wouldn't fire as much. So it seems to have something to do with the trigger. All right, okay. I got the I got the answer. High high point plastic trigger that'll fix it. Yeah, right. Okay. So I I mean you know what the thing is. Um, I know there's some different articles. I think Nick Leghorn had an article talking about other guns that are not drop safe. I'm thinking uh, what came to mind from that article. 1911. Maybe there's a few other guns out there that are not drop safe. First of all, what do you guys think? Do we do we need drop safe guns? What's your what do you say, Walter? I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, within well, yes, it's a very good idea because the last thing you want is somebody to drop it accidentally. You know, in the in the in the at the office or it, where the police are getting ready to go do their thing during the day and shoot somebody. Yeah, you know? or anywhere. I mean, have yeah, you, yeah, it doesn't Walter, matter. Have you ever dropped a Have you ever dropped a handgun? Yeah, I fell on top of a handgun when I was walking in the woods. That'll scare the living shit out of you. <laughs> yeah, you fell on top of your own handgun? I, yeah, I tripped and it landed like this, like there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was a revolver, though. It wasn't an automatic, but still, it still scared the living crap out of you because you're like, oh, I'm still alive. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't I want think... to go off by dropping. It's not a good yeah. situation. Yeah, absolutely. I think drop safe is good. What do you think? Or, or it's a, to me, in the modern day world, it's a necessity. And I think modern guns nowadays, for the most part, have them, not all of them. But I think even with some 1911s nowadays have them, right, Kevin? Um, yeah. Or have that. It... Some of the modern 1911s are a bit safer. I do think that every gun does need to have a, a, a drop safety and a functional drop safety. It's, and if you think about it from a law enforcement perspective, just let's play cop for a second. You know, what happens if you get into, which we don't want, but what happens if you get into a struggle over your gun, right? Oh, it goes simple into the ground. You don't want to pray that it doesn't strike the ground in a certain way so it does not fire at you. Just want that thing to be safe. So, uh, definitely, if it's going to be in service, that's a little different from sitting in some guy's safe and you take it out once every now and then. That's mm -hmm. a big deal when you're you're walking around every day and you're dependent on it. Right. Uh, I have personally dropped two guns, um, and I yeah I deliberately was or them. accidentally. <laughs> uh, the first one I dropped was um it was years and years ago, man. It was a Taurus PT one eleven. Um, coming down the steps in my house, I'm a young kid. This is like back when I first start really getting into them, and I was uh, carrying this gun. And I tripped over a vacuum cleaner cord <laughs> and it came out of my hands at the top of my steps as I was walking down the steps and that thing went tumbling down the steps and the burrow just, you know, kept rotating and I jumped over the petition. <laughs> uh, I, didn't, I didn't trust it, but it worked. It worked in the tours, believe it or not. And um, then the other time I dropped one, actually, I did do that one on purpose. I drop tested a, a Glock 19 and it worked fine. But so, yeah, I've never had one go off and I, I would want it yeah. to play if it did get dropped. Well, yeah, we were uh, the other day on Friday when we were talking about this. There was some serious hate going on towards Glock, I sensed. And, um, you know, they, they tested theirs throwing them out of helicopters. So, yeah, I, I think the Glock won't go off. Maybe. No, Glock is pretty much drop safe. I mean, yeah, you know. I know, I know, I know. It's not attractive to some people. It's not cool to some people. But it, you know, there are some benefits to it. I don't. You know what? I think the biggest thing for me. I'm not. I don't want to speak for Matt because he's not here or Patrick. But the biggest thing for me is what the hell happened in all this testing that was going on? Because it what it did cut off early, right? The testing that the military did cut off early, at least, right? It seemed it, seemed it was awfully short compared to other tests. Well, they also in their tests they didn't require that you drop it. Uh, the way you only have to drop it flat to the floor or muzzle down. That's the drop test standard. So as right. long as you can drop it muzzle down. And how, you do you how, do you how do you determine that when you yeah. actually drop it? That's like a, 
Yeah, that's what their testing standards are. Yeah, I mean that. I think that um, I think several people were saying that that is the the basic um, standard. So this is the whole thing about tests, right? Because who's writing the test standard? Who's doing the, yeah, right. Yeah, right. and why is that a test standard? Like you know, will never happen. Eight oh three salad shooter says, "Do you guys remember the Uzi scene in True Lies?" Yeah. Yeah, where the Uzi was falling down the steps and shooting oh, yeah, yeah, and killing yeah. everyone. Uzi, Uzi's, <laughs> one of the, Uzi's one of the safest submachine guns there is. So a Uzi is drop safe. Don't believe the movies, right? Yeah, I, I can. I think we talked about that on one of the videos about how you yeah. have to squeeze the grip safety and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Oh yes, right. That's true. So that was picture like a picture. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Picture like a picture. Picture, picture like, like a picture. I was telling. Um, a, I think it was last week. We had late Boy Scout on, and in Guyana, where I'm from, that's uh -oh. that's a thing. So when you see something crazy in the movies like, it, like, like that, it. and I would ask my dad, like, "Oh, what's up with that?" He would go, "Picture, picture like, like a picture." picture. Yeah. Because back, because back in the olden days, they called movies moving pictures. Oh yeah. So they they were like, "That's just some crazy shit that you only see in the movies." Yeah. Gotcha. Makes so, sense. yeah. So that doesn't, you know, but uh, so obviously this this is something that like I thought really this was put to bed and this wasn't going to be a thing anymore, you know. Um, well, woke up the next day from that, there was a whole bunch of comments hating on us, like we're all bastards. And we're all evil. Really, I did. Yeah. I guess and we're I did. all do, We're doing like fake news, like CNN. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. We got pretty seriously attacked by. The I didn't. E3 I didn't see that. I, I guess I missed that. Well, yeah, go look at go go look at it. I left all that stuff there, man. I haven't even had time to uh, to get around to those comments, but they were like, man, those man. those P three twenty fanboys were on fire. I don't have. Well, you know, I was looking for. A, I was trying to find a pistol I had that I could mount that my wicked knife on the one that goes in the picatinny rail <laughs> i don't have a pistol new enough that has a decent piece of picatinny rail on uh, you, you know you. what walter i was uh kind of tired i told you last time we talked i had one of them things right i yeah. told you oh was. no oh oh look at that oh, yeah goodness yeah, gracious I'm today i'm gonna mount it on something there. now everybody's pulling out okay let's see kevin pull out his go ahead kevin <laughs> everybody's pulling their knives out nice. not, not what you yeah, thought I gotta, it, I gotta put it on something pulling really. out knives okay I don't. I don't have a. I don't well, have a I, bayonet. I, was, I, I don't have it. All of autos I have. The Glock I have is a Gen Two. I have an HS two thousand, which is the predecessor of the uh, of the uh, Springfield. Um, uh, whatever the hell that is. If you if you guys want to throw up guns, check this out. What is that? What is that you have there? What the HS two thousand, which is the Springfield. Um, what is Springfield's auto pistol called? Um, XDM, XDM? Yeah, the XD, XD. Yeah, this was before it was uh, Springfield. Oh, that's what it was. And and that's a picture. Well, I I have one. Okay. Um, and you have that, a picture just laying around. It's it's, a, it's from it's like from, it's, it's like from the 2000 shot show. It was one of their advertising <laughs> things, you know? It looks pretty real. The picture looks I, you know. Oh, oh wise guy. Okay. <laughs> Check this out, Walter. Do you know what this is? Here, I'm going to lock this on me for a second so you guys can see this. This is uh, one of my. Oh wait, it didn't lock up me. Well, Walter, a, Walter. Here we go. A, it's real dirty over here. This is like some. Yeah. Some, Isn't that a um, an early um? That's a MP. Yeah, MMP. Yeah. Yeah. This is an MMP twenty two. It's got the safety on it. Oh okay. That thing. But it's an MMP twenty two, and you know why I have it? Why? I have it because of this. Oh, the little one. Check well, this out. Yeah, this is a uh, Rebel yeah. silencers. I think it's a SOS Micro 22 LR. Check I got, I got, we'll I got two too. Let, it, let me let it focus. Yeah, we got two of them. This one's mine. This one's a uh, Babyface P. So hold on a second. I'm locked. Let me unlock myself, Walter. Hey, you want to show yours? Sure. Okay, there this you go. On a Walter um, P22. Yeah. Yeah, we shot it out, and well, we shot it today in the bullet trap and such. How was it? Um, as a single baffle. Um, uh, okay. Was it hearing safe? I thought it was, but I'm half deaf, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that helps. <laughs> Will Will thought it had a little bit of a crack to it, my son. Yeah. We're, oh, okay. Were you using uh, Subsonic 22 or no? Yes. You were. I, okay. I have some Gemtech um, Subsonic. Oh, okay. And then yeah. then we doubled it. We stacked it with the second one, mm -hmm. and then it got it down to a normal, a normal suppressor level. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. And we put some we put some hog grease in it. The ran that helped. Yeah, I, I don't know if I put enough because I've never, I've never done that, so I don't know what's okay. the right amount. So okay. We'll have to play with it some more, and then when I see you next time, we'll stack three or four of them together, 
and see how much we can. Yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> we'll do it. So here's here's mine, just so you guys can see it, and and I'm gonna like thread it on here. So this is from uh, Rebel Silencers. Yeah, and they, they had a, they had a special, right? They had a, they had a promo, yeah. which is basically you pay the shipping, fifteen dollars, and they'll send you a can. Yeah, absolutely. So we got Babyface got one. I got one. I got one. Yeah. Chris, Chris that works for me got yeah, one. Everyone, did you get one of these, Kevin? Uh, no, I had no idea that that was even a thing. Fifteen dollars, and they just sent it to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you got it. You know, it's got to go to a lot of the stuff. But yeah, do you have any suppressors? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, this would have been like a, uh, you know, pretty cheap. I mean, you still have to pay like the two hundred dollar tax stamp on it. Right, but right, you right, know, right. So, so it's really like you know a little bit more than. Uh, I I didn't I didn't believe it when my Chris came in. Chris that works for me in the shop goes, "Hey, you hear about this uh, suppressor for fifteen dollars?" I go, "No, you're full of shit." Yeah, and then, <laughs> and, and then he says, "Yeah, just send them fifteen dollars in your paperwork." And I so I did it. Yeah, there's lots of deals like that going around with suppressors, by the way, Kevin. Really? Yes. Just in case I, you don't know, there's lots of deals right now because the suppressor market is the flat. Yeah, it's very flat. So lots of companies have cool deals. Um, and I was looking at their Instagram page, uh, Rebel Silencers. They're they're on Instagram. They're cool guys. They even reposted the post that I put. Check this out. This is the Smith and Wesson Victory. Look at that. Another twenty. I like shooting. Uh, probably my favorite round for fun is, is that, twenty-two. Is that a? I never seen that one before. Yeah. So yeah, this is, is this is the uh, Smith and Wesson Victory. Is that new for Smith and Wesson? Um, it's been out for at least a year, if not longer than that. Um, we actually bought this from Smith and Wesson. To I I you know what I'm gonna do a video. I haven't actually put up a video yet. Um, just because a whole bunch of stuff has been coming in and out and all that, but you know, let's test it out. I don't know what I'm actually going to test this on. Um, it will probably this will probably sound better on something that has like a longer barrel, eh, so maybe. a 22 rifle. You yeah. know, because like we we we've been doing tests, and obviously, if you're suppressing, the longer barrel helps, right? Well, you so, got more you got more burn time to burn the yeah. powder and everything else in the barrel. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. But it's great. I mean, I you know, looks good. Yeah, it's good on there. You know, if uh, we'll test and see how the sound of that comes out. You know. Yeah, it'll be we'll fun. Test it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you've done some. Did you put? You posted that video on Instagram, right? Yes. So it's anyone good. who's dying to see or hear, the problem is, is with video, is you don't really, you know, it's yeah. it's tough to tell. And I did it with my cell phone, and the cell phone has a case on it, so it kind of yeah, kind of muffled the sound. So. Right. That's for, that's for Walter. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so you want to do a test of Walter right now, Kevin? Well, no. Oh, you know, oh, oh, let's see. oh wait. You yours, oh, yours? yeah. Look at that. So this is <laughs> this is your um, wait. Why does your bayonet have a um a seatbelt cutter on it? Um, just in case you know you're in the zombie apocalypse, <laughs> you need to cut yourself out of a seatbelt, Hank. Why would you ask? Uh, a question? Uh, because if you're in the zombie apocalypse, don't waste your time wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> oh, yeah, you 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 might find some damsel in distress that needs your help. Right. Okay. Yeah, and when you go in with your gun to cut her out of the thing, that's not going to be crazy at all. <laughs> I just I just picked this thing up at a gun show. I thought it was wacky. I think I paid like eight dollars for it. No, it's, it's, it's cool. It's crazy cool. Uh, yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah. Okay, you want to throw yours up, Walter? Where's yours? Did you get it on a gun? No. I don't. I said I don't have a gun to mount it on. All my stuff no. is old. It can't mount on your high point. Oh, not yet. No, actually, it won't. The high point doesn't have enough. They didn't. They didn't run the Picatinny rail far enough out. Hold up. Hold up your uh, high point for a second. Let's see here. See, it's it's oh, too wow. short. It's too short. Right oh here. wow. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty short. That's pretty yeah. short. Yeah. You know what's weird? My um my my twenty two from Smith and Wesson has yeah. more <laughs> more real estate than than your high point well, does. That's crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Smith and Wesson M and P twenty two is by far one of the the best guns I've ever shot. Mm -hmm. It is. Awesome. Uh, the compact and the full size. I think them things rock. That's what I actually use for new students. Um, yeah. Run a few of those. I love them. But that victory has issues. The victory, yes. Um, I I've heard that. That's the reason why we want to test it and why we, you know, why we actually went to the to the trouble of like instead of doing the regular T and E thing, we just like let's buy it and test it. I just haven't gotten into it, but I have heard there's issues. What kind of issues did you have? So we had a we had a, a few guys I know that have them. Uh, first thing, they, they, all of them have feeding issues. Uh, so we thought it was the magazines, right? So okay. 
uh, just swap out mags, uh, you know, pull one off a shelf, throw it in there and see what happens. Uh, nope. The magazines couldn't have been an issue, and then I'm thinking, well, maybe it's the ammo because I'll then we start running a follow out of it, CCI, Thunderbolt. You know, we kept switching up the ammo, it'll get two or three rounds out, lock up, uh, just bad feeding. Um, we had to send three of them back to Smith. Uh, oh, wow. two of the customers got them back, um, worked fine. One guy we had to send it back two or three times before they finally got whatever it was right. Uh, but yeah, they were not cycling, they just yeah. So we have had things like that with this. But, you know, we haven't really tested it enough. That's why I haven't, you know, gotten into the to the whole thing with it. We have had some issues and I was thinking, oh, maybe it's just we were, we're throwing in real dirty ammo or whatever. So that's highly likely. We'll see. I'll do something with this. I really need to uh, get around to it. So, um, hey, I got an so. answer. I think I'll add I'm going to do some mods to, to the high point. I'm going to throw a piece of Picatinny rail right on the side here so I can mount it okay. on the side. I think 803 is 803 solid shooter saying he's had problems with the victory as well. Yes, yeah, um, a lot of out of battery fires. Out of battery? Yeah. Oh. The battery bounces. Is that what you wrote, Lola? The bolt. <laughs> okay. You can't read your writing. The bolt bounces when it slams forward. Okay. Yeah. So Lola has like a uh, pharmacist handwriting, which is horrible. Always getting me in trouble here, but yeah. So there's apparently problems with the with the victory. Wow. We we will we will, we're gonna have to test this now, Walter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can pull that out with that Walter bullpup and watch both of them not work. Yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the only times I put a couple of rounds through this suppressed, I think, and different things. So and I wasn't super happy with it, and then it's just sat there waiting for me to get around to testing it. But so now we got it from Kevin. We got it from 803 Solid Shooter. So. Yeah. So um, Chris B wants to know, Walt, how drop safe is a Mac 10? <laughs> Not very. <laughs> well, any any open bolt sub gun, dangerous. Uh, well, it, it doesn't have a. The Mac 10 has no. Yeah. It has no. It has no safety at all besides. Yeah. Uh, locking the with the bolt with a with the handle, I think that's yeah. I think uh, fifty stitches steel says um, Walter. Anything open bolt could potentially fail easier than closed bolt, right? Yeah, but so. yeah, oh yeah, definitely. But the, they did a lot. They did. They took care of a lot of it with the Uzi. It's hard to make an Uzi go off. I, I don't yeah. know how you can really. We tr I haven't done it in person, but I've tried to, you know, do different things and make it go, and it won't go. So. Is that is that because the Israelis had like higher standards? <laughs> well, no, they had they had high, higher injuries. Oh, so, okay. So they had a lot of problems. Yeah, they can't. They can't afford one guy to be out of, out of out of service. So right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's why they did that. So. Yeah. So you know what? Let's take a break from talking about guns. I'm sure we have more guns. We'll come back to guns, okay. and we'll show some more guns. I've got yeah. guns. I got a couple more guns. I here. got some Walter's, stuff sitting here too. Yeah. Yeah. Walter's got a lot of guns. I uh, got to make a correction from the other day. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, do you want to just do that now? The Draco, Draco. Do, yeah, because you were showing me your, you were showing me something, and you said it was your Draco, and then I, I, I posted, and instead of like sending me a text to tell me that I put the wrong thing on my post, what did you say, Walter? <laughs> you know, what did you? I, do? You just I, totally I, stole I, me down the river. I do have a Draco, but that ain't it. That's what I said. So yeah. So what is this? This is your. This is a Yugo. Um, uh, you go, you go, you. Go. I always forget this stuff. Oh, this really? Is a, this is a Pap ninety two. Okay, so this is a Yugoslavian or okay. Serbian? Excuse me, Serbian. Serbian yeah. Pap ninety two. Okay, yeah. and where's the Draco? The Draco, the Draco is right here. Okay, so here we go, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Those things look real. Now, can you show both of them at the same time? <laughs> I mean. How do we? So how? Oh, do now, we tell? okay, okay. Let me. Let me. You, you want to get a oh, quick lesson? Oh, is it the front? Is it the? Um, is it the muzzle device? How do we? No, not necessarily. The is main it thing. Optics? Uh, yes. Okay. The um, this the. The pap, has a top cover. I'll show you. It has a top cover that's hinged. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. that's pretty like, cool, actually. Like, like a crank off. Okay. And then different gas arrangement up here. And a different, different um, muzzle brake type arrangement. Okay. The, um, what the, kind of muzzle device is that? That is, um, it's it's like a Russian crank off, which has this this chamber in the front to collect gas to help. Oh, okay. To push yeah. the bolt back and things, or put yeah. the, the piston back. Okay, cool. 
Okay. The, uh, the Draco or Draco is basically straight up AK in the front here. With it's got a different style sight, but it's got the original, the original style. So what makes so what makes the Draco different from any other AK pistol? Um, so the, probably the only thing that's really different between a lot of them is this front, the front sight gas port arrangement, which is kind of unique to it. Um, but aside from that, it's just like any other AK pistol or any other AK. Okay. As the way it works or the way that yeah. it So just show those two again for anyone out there so we can – I mean, this should have been part of our AK thing. We'll probably include this again yeah. when we do, like, another part of our everything about AKs. Yeah, that's what I was hoping yeah. to do is show the difference between the different yeah. – But meanwhile, colors. you had some fun at my expense. That's cool. Oh, it wasn't that bad. I understand. Stop, stop your belly. We're still boys. We're still boys. <laughs> We're but still friends. But I will get you. I'm sure. I will get you back. Revenge <laughs> is my middle name. Hank Revenge Strange, which means the revenge will be very strange when it is visited upon you, as well as cold. It will be cold and strange. Oh, you're cold as ice. <laughs> so, okay, enough. Okay. Enough of that. All right. All right. So let's uh, – Who? Uh, uh, Kevin, do you have news? Do I have news? Yeah, you want to hit us up with some news? Uh, you want me to pick? Oh, I want those. Okay, if not, um, okay, let's. Oh, wait do... a minute. Hey, one, uh -oh. one thing I did see in the news, and this has nothing to do with animals or anything like that. Um, uh -huh. you, you don't you have any the... weird stargates or interdimensional rifts. <laughs> I left that. I, I left that stuff somewhere else tonight. Uh -huh. you, you see, you see where that uh, federal agent shot himself in the airport? Shot himself in the foot? No. With his own gun. Yeah, no. that, what agency was he from? Oh, uh, he was getting ready to fly too, which was scary. Um, where's that picture at? They had a picture of him on Facebook on uh, on was Fox, he, I think. Uh, it was. was he FBI? No, he wasn't that high up the food chain. He was something else, and he looked like Only he was security. He he looked very round. Let's say he was a round person. Um, oh really? So, thick, thick. That same. Okay. Day. Yeah. So I don't know how many seats he takes in the plane, but. He shot himself in the foot before he got on. So. Oh, okay. No, I didn't hear about this. Yeah, no. Okay, you got to find that and give us some actual yeah, I know. details. I, I, I had it set aside. Oh, wait a minute. It was on the firearms blog. That's right. Oh, That's right. okay. Oh, yeah. Not, federal, federal agent shoots himself in the foot at Orlando International Airport. Oh, Florida. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> we are just messing it up, man, every time. Uh, oh, well, yeah. It was something going on in Florida every second of the yeah. day. Uh, <laughs> we keep it spicy uh, in Florida. <laughs> Immigrations and Customs Enforcement Officer. Oh, immigration, immigration. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, bad day for that boy. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it happens. Yeah. It happens, it happens to the best of us, I yeah, guess. It happens. So let's. Uh, here's here's something interesting. I sent you guys this. Oh yeah, this, yeah. This is from the BBC News. BBC. So I'm gonna read you guys. This is on. This is in. Uh, I guess this is in Manchester. It says, here's the headline, woman shot in vagina in sex game gone wrong. <laughs> so, okay. Yes. So it says a woman was shot in the vagina and left with life-changing injuries uh, in a sex that? game gone wrong. A court is heard. 46-year-old has been engaged in sexual activity with David Andrew Jeffers. Uh, so how come you get, you get a middle name when you shoot someone in the JJ? <laughs> um, at well, a, st a Stockport hotel in January when she was shot, Jeffers admitted possessing a firearm with intent to endanger life and was jailed for 10 years. The two had been engaged in a sex fantasy when the weapon fired, the Crown Prosecution Services said. Um, this was in this was in Manchester in England, uh, and I guess she was badly bleeding. Yeah. No, no kidding. Yeah. Wow, this is pretty crazy. Um, first of all, I thought you weren't even supposed to have guns in England. You're not. They were supposed oh. to not exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> so, and if you do have them, definitely sticking them up the JJ's is not the purpose. There's a lot. <laughs> that's why they, that's why. That's why you, got, invented, a, that's why you got a pecker for it. Yeah, like, this is why the Egyptians <laughs> invented dildos. Well, hey, you see what happens when you hide toys from the kids? <laughs> they're going to play with them. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to play with them. Yeah. No, this, these people were old. They're like 47. Well, they're still they're gun kids because they can't have firearms. And as soon as they get their hands on one, yeah, they just stick it up their hole. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, no, yeah, it's um, yeah, that's a really bad use of – there's definitely was no gun safety there. Yeah. No. Once know. again, there's a lot and of those. There was yeah. no protection. 
<laughs> yeah, and there were so many, you know. I like to see the Trojan that have fixed that. Right. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, there were so many, um, there's so many things that are wrong with this. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't even start yet. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I mean, like, as, as a woman. I, How you, you let know, somebody do that to you? Well, is it wrong that I'm curious about what kind of gun it was? No, I think we're all a little bit curious about what gun. Let me see if it's in the article. I sent it to you guys here. I think it was a shotgun. I heard shotgun. No, it can't be. Uh, da, da, da. Well, what do you mean it can't be? Why would you put a shotgun up there? Let's put any gun up there. Uh, well, yeah, there you go. Why would you do that? So he says that this guy says he found it in a pub toilet. Pub is a, a, a bar. <laughs> Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know. You found the gun in the pub. Oh, so you find a gun in a toilet and stick it up in a. Okay. Oh, All right. Get, that, that's, that gets even nastier. Yeah. And I mean, oh, I feel sorry. I'm, look, I'm looking through this article. I don't see what kind of. Uh, well, yeah, I guess. Well, at least we know it's a handgun if you found it in a toilet. But. Yeah, I mean, and, a, and apparently he can only he gets he can get up to like ten years, but yeah, possession. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's really really crazy. That was a one for England, but you know, I keep telling people there's still guns in these places. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, well, when you have one. when you have all of Eastern Europe that's armed, it's kind of hard to keep them out, and there's no checkpoints in the highways like there yeah. used to be. So everything. Yeah. And then because they have this culture of people um, not being able to legally have guns, people don't understand gun safety and all that. It's but, just. Like it's just like having a house full of kids, and they're all curious. Yeah, but not to say that you know that can't happen in America. It can. Oh, you know, it does every day here, but not usually not in the vagina. But yeah, but you know, I mean, as a you know, from, from my <laughs> point of view, I don't like what, what I think about this. And everybody thought Trump was bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, what I think about this, this poor woman has to like go through her life now. Oh wow! With like yeah. a seriously damaged you know, Everything. vaginal areas. I mean, it's going to take some, you know, the, the person who, are they going to like give her a vagina replacement or <laughs> what? You know, I'm concerned about this woman now. What? <laughs> you know, I want to make sure she's going to be able to live her life. Well, I'm guessing not. The problem to do is give her enough medical attention to make sure she's okay, because I, I really do feel sorry for her. And well, then, yeah. you know, prance her as another poster child for why guns shouldn't be allowed. That's probably so, yeah. Or how dangerous they are. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's, but I think it's something of the reason why, no matter what you do, people, you, you know, people are going to get their hands on these things, and you need to, you need to take time to train people about things, because yeah. probably he had no, he didn't know how to make this, you know, just a piece of metal. He didn't know how to do that. If that's, you know, what he wanted to get up to. So I ain't buying it. And, uh, and yeah, that, yeah. You know, that was an argument I actually had this weekend, and I brought my my son up because he helps me instruct kids, and I brought him up, and I asked him, and he's eleven, and I asked him in front of all those adults, even if somebody hates guns, you know, besides praying for them, mm -hmm. uh, would you still advise them to have gun training? And at eleven, he was able to say yes, and I said why? He's like, because what happens when you go somewhere else and you find a gun, even if you don't have one in your house? I don't understand why they don't even do that minimum standard even in the countries where they don't want to allow firearms to be to be in public. People should yeah. have. It's the same thing here. It's the same thing here in America. We should teach everyone about gun safety. We should do it. We shouldn't pretend. It's like uh, pretending. It's like there's a big monster hiding under your bed and you're pretending, you know, that monster's not there. I, 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 I agree with you. I agree with it, but they don't want it. The, the other side doesn't want you to even think about the gun. Well, Walter, I have a question for you, though. What's that? So here's my question. Do you, okay, let's, I know when we talk about the other side, that will kind of be the kids like letting us in the schools and talk about it. So let's, let's pretend every, everybody in this country right now is 21. Okay. Uh, no, let's make them 18. So minimum age is 18 years old. Everybody's 18 through whatever age. Okay. How many people on their own accord do you think will actually go out and get safety training? Not very a lot. Low. I would say a very low number. No, because at 18, you know everything already, so. Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's hard when you get these, you know, it's, and I think we had touched on this once before. You're talking about the, you know, the constitutional carry spread across the country, which is great. You know, thumbs up right in the right direction. But then is when you, like, try to hold adults responsible, like, at least come get trained for you can take it back to your kids, right? Well, you, you told the story about the man in the parking lot, right? Was that you? Is that you or was that another story where the old man in the parking lot? 
I think that was Ardo Kevin. Was Ardo J. That was Ardo. Oh, was it? Oh, was it Ardo? Oh, yeah. okay. He wanted to test fire the gun in the parking lot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was Ardo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, see, I think last week we had a 13 year old boy. This is uh, I had to use this in my event this weekend uh, in one of our uh, local uh, project communities. We had a 13 year old boy about two weeks ago now found a handgun while mom was downstairs. He went upstairs. He found a handgun and mm -hmm. had his 10-year-old brother with him, and he was trying to figure out how to unload it and shot and killed his brother, All right? And it's yeah. like, people, get get safe. I, I think, I, I don't think you can well, end all of this. You can't end stupidity, and you, and you can't well, end ignorance, and, the, the and you, can't, you, know, you can't end kids doing things like this, but you can, you can minimize it by just teaching, right, right, right. you know, teaching kids about gun safety. And the first thing is they see a gun, they should just leave it alone, leave it alone. and then notify someone that, right. you know, an adult that that gun is there. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe it's because it was the NRA, but the NRA was trying to do that in the schools. And I think a lot of the schools kicked them out in places. So, but you know, you know how simple this. Is? Can I give you guys a live demonstration for your viewers how simple this is? Sure. Sure. Caitlin, come here, sweetheart. Come around this way. And you know, it, it it just bothers me for parents that are you know always trying to hide and not encourage their kids to be safe, and then you just turn around and say, "Oh, it's this horrible thing. It's this horrible thing. It's it's easier than you think." Come here, baby. So, Caitlin, I want you okay. to say hi to Hank and Walker. Okay. We finally have someone cute on the show. <laughs> <laughs> say hi. hi. It's beautiful. Hi, hi Caitlin. Right, say thank you. Thank you. Okay, Caitlin, I have some questions for you, okay? I'm just going to ask you three easy questions. <laughs> All right, are you ready? You ready? Okay. Caitlin, pay attention. What is this? A gun. Is this a toy? No. Can it hurt people? Yes. What should you do if you see one? Tell you. What if you're over a friend's house and you see one? Oh, yeah. Is there any reason why you touch this? No. Give me kisses. No, thank you, big girl. <laughs> <laughs> He's five years old. There is no reason why you shouldn't be having those kind of conversations. Right, 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 right. Well, they, they, have it, they have it about everything else. Just yeah, or we should. You should have it about, you know, anything that you think your kids like. Uh, when you live in places that have a lot of water, or even if you don't, you should teach oh, your kids yeah. how to swim. Swimming, yeah, drowning. Yeah. More kids get drowned here in Florida than get killed by guns, I think, if I'm not mistaken. That's a fact. Yeah, you know, and you should teach your kids about alcohol. You should talk to them about sex, obviously. You know, strangers. There's all these things we talk oh, yeah, to our kids yeah. about, and we think, yeah, you know, if we just pretend that guns don't exist in the world, if or if we just if we hate them, they will all magically go away, and that's not the solution, you know. Or or teach them how to shoot, and and that takes away the curiosity. Yeah. And, you know, also, it shows them that this is a destructive device. Well, you know, because too, yeah, yeah. You, you can teach your kids. Here's the thing, right? You can teach your kids about guns, but some other kid puts their hand on a gun and is coming out with this thing. And when your kid sees that, they should uh -huh. automatically go into danger mode like, oh, shit, let me get away mm -hmm. from. Exit you know, stage left. Yeah, let me get away from this person because that's a destructive thing. Right, right, right. You well, know, I mean, yeah. so but that's I mean, you know, obviously we're the choir and we're preaching to ourselves. Right. And and, and are you I'm, I'm not you can't assume that. You know, I, I can't think of myself when I was 13 because I was I was pretty gun wise when I was 13 because it was uh, I grew up with guns. But a lot of kids don't. And they're very curious because they see it everywhere else. But until when they get it in their hands, it's like, oh, you know, and it's like take away that curiosity. And most of that, most of your problems is gone. Yeah. You know, well, I, go I don't even I can leave stuff around and they don't even want it's like, oh, you know what that. Yeah. <laughs> I would I would like to I would say that's um I know I go in a lot of local schools and do it. I did actually wind up having a breakthrough. So I will I will give credit where credit is due. And as soon as we officially put the event together, I'll blast the school out. Uh, but I have had one principal actually say that this year they want to bring me in to teach handgun safety to the students and their parents. They'll yeah. provide the facility and they want me to come in and do it for elementary school students and parents. And big shout out to uh Maj Ture. He actually got into a Philadelphia high school, which was cool. Mm -hmm. And they all gun training along, so that was good. So I guess there are some small strides being done. Yeah, yeah. Mosh, is, Mosh is a good guy. He's doing a lot of uh, a lot of cool stuff out there. We got to get him back on here to um, talk about some of these events that he's going to. Okay, so I just posted this uh, link here. I want to talk to you guys. I don't know if you guys are ready with your new stuff, but I posted this on my Facebook fan page, uh, which is Facebook slash Hank Strange. Quick plug yeah. there. And I just want to remind everyone watching this, share this on Twitter, Facebook, whatever you got that we're doing this live broadcast. 
So here, this article is from, it, this is a San, uh, Sacramento story. I think it's in the Sacramento B. Oh. And, the, and the headline is 50 men commit most gun crimes in Sacramento. Could money and mentoring get them to stop? Fifth, so 50 men are the cause of all the problems. Yeah, so it says when someone is shot in Sacramento, it's a good bet that one of about 50 mostly black or Latino young men pulled the trigger. Police know it. The figure comes in part from a city, from a city analysis of five years of homicide data and intelligence, said Khalid Mutaki, director of the city's gang prevention and intervention task force. Community members know it. The men are often well-established troublemakers in their na neighborhoods. Um, and this goes on. Basically, what this article is talking about is that their way of dealing with this is mentoring these guys and paying them money, giving them money to stop. <laughs> I can't hold myself back. Why are these people on the street? Yeah, I don't understand either. If you know who these 50 people are, I mean, come on, man. If there was ever a reason for special ops, <laughs> you know. <laughs> if just take these dudes out. I mean, first of all, they shouldn't, they should, I don't know if they know who they are. I don't know why they're out there. And if, if they know who they are, they've done something else. So why are they still right. out there? Yeah. Well, you know, maybe because of, you know, people have this crazy thing in America, America called stop snitching or don't snitch. Well, that, yeah, that goes on. But I mean, how long before one of your, one of your family gets shot by the person you didn't snitch on? Now, you know what else is crazy, too? A lot of times, you know, from, you know, being around law enforcement and working in a long time, sometimes you want to leave guys out there dangling till they really do the ultimate thing, right? To catch them red handed. So, yeah, you go commit these petty robberies and hopefully nobody dies. We're really waiting to catch you red handed in a murder or something like that. You know, then we'll bring you in. And it's yeah, crazy. that's yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, if if this situation is that bad and they know who these 50 dudes are, they, sh they just shouldn't exist anymore with the rest of us on the face of the planet, you know? Uh, Why leave 50 dangerous people like this floating around to do something really horrible? Um, and that's my thing. I mean, I know that yeah. that may sound bad. I don't care who they are, man. They shouldn't. They I, just shouldn't be out there. Yeah, I agree with you. you. Know? Um, but so, what are and, you and then definitely paying so them gonna, off isn't going to help anything. That's extortion. So they can buy better. They can buy better guns. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, what happens when they take the money, they buy guns, or they buy drugs, they sell more drugs, and it just gets worse? That's crazy. If you know that's, who these fifty dudes are, take them out. That's yeah. like it's like coddling a terrorist. You know, you can't coddle a terrorist. The only good terrorist is a dead one. Yeah, you so, can't allow people to hold you hostage. That's that's crazy. No, yeah. that's that's the liberal way of thinking. Of, you know, only you're gonna, in Sacramento. <laughs> yeah, well, look at Cal California's a a poop hole, anyways. So yeah. Unfortunately. Crazy. Let us know what you guys think about that, because I think that is that is solidly one hundred and ten percent in the batshit crazy. Hey. Hey, let me send you guys a link to this uh, story as well here. Okay. Guys. Hold on. Let me send this to you. But yeah, that's that's crazy, man. I, I don't I don't believe in uh, allowing anybody to to hold you hostage. I just sent it over. Yeah. There. If you if you know who these guys are, take them out. Take them out. <laughs> no, but are we? Yeah. In, which brings up another conversation. Are we entering? into um you know with everything else that is going on as far as you know safe places and all these things are we entering into this utopia where every single there are people like us i'm not trying to say you can't but every single bad guy can be brought back and can see the bright side are we are we slowly entering into that kind of mindset i don't think we're slowly entering i think we've been there with some people for a long time but that's craziness i mean you know what was that I don't know why people just don't believe evil exists. What was what, Walter? What happened? Uh, I started again. I, I clicked on uh, Kevin's link, and all of a sudden the music started playing on my side. So, oh, I don't know oh. what happened. Okay, there. we didn't hear. We didn't hear it over here. Okay, that's a good thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's certain time you have to remove people from. It's like a rabid dog. I mean, you can't fix a rabid dog, and there's certain people. Sorry, you just can't fix. You know, there I, was. This there was this uh, story. I think this happened down in Dallas a few years ago. It was this uh, uh, this guy who uh, shot and killed the guy after they asked him for a cigarette. I'd have to look up the story, but he shot and killed this guy. Was caught red-handed, and when a the local news went to interview him, and it was all over Facebook and stuff for a while. They went to interview him, and uh, anchor was asking him, "So you don't feel any remorse? The guy didn't do anything to you. You just decided to kill him." He was like, "Yeah, and just another dead person. What's the big right. deal?" Like mm -hmm. just oh man, just stone right, right to the gallows. Sorry, man. There's no, there's no fixing that. You know, it's oh. 
There's just certain people who shouldn't be in society with the rest of us. And right, right. if they know, if they can identify who these 50 guys are, half your problem is uh, right there. Yeah, Same but with that too, I guess another question would be, uh, I, did. I know you you kind of just threw it out there, like, you know, get the get spec ops together and go grab them. Uh, mm -hmm. So are we, <laughs> will we then, with that, with that community or us, the United States of America even, will we beat up the police for how aggressive they are going to get those 50 guys? Yeah. I wouldn't. Well, I'm sorry if you know who these 50 guys are. Yeah, remember back with uh, like Al Capone and all those gangsters in the 30s? Mm -hmm. The police, the police, I mean, they didn't, there was no asking questions and interrogating because they know those guys were going to kill them if they tried to do that. So it was, it was game on every time they got close to each other. So I don't know. It's a lot, it's a like that in a lot of places, I guess. I, I, I've never lived in that kind of environment. So, but, um, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I mean, to know about 50 people terrorizing your community. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, well. And then you do nothing about it. I, I don't, at, at some point, you think the community would demand that law enforcement take care of that issue. You would think so. By, by any means necessary, without paying them. You know, what kind of what kind of message does that send? Hey, guys, all across the country, just go start a bunch of problems, get <laughs> 50 people to help you, and they will pay you to go away. Well, we'll give you some money then. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Pretty good. So, what else is in the? Uh... Yeah. What's your? What's your? Um. Why don't you tell us about your story, Kevin? All right, the story. The story that I put up is an unfortunate one, um, and uh, I hate to see this kind of thing happening. Um, I don't think it got big as it should have should have gotten, but it was a bombing in Bloomington, uh, Minnesota, of a mosque. Uh, it was a fire bomb, and it is. Uh, the governor is calling it an act of terrorism. That's uh, per the governor, um, Mark Dayton in uh, Minnesota, is calling it an act of terrorism. Um, basically, I'm trying to. I was trying to read, and I've listened to a couple of stories, see if it was occupied. I don't believe anybody was hurt, uh, but they definitely firebombed it. It was intentional. It wasn't anything accidental. And they're trying to figure out who did it and why they did it. And uh, they set up a GoFundMe if anybody wanted to give to it. And I know that one of the videos I watched earlier. Uh, from one of the Muslim leaders is that they want people to realize that despite any kind of racial tension in the, uh, the country, they are Americans and they support America and they just don't want to be judged or viewed as anything else but Americans and they wish that this was stop. Um, mm -hmm. So that was, um, you know, it's pretty heartbreaking. I'm not, I'm not ever for anybody being, being hurt, you know, and these people are praying and worshiping and understand that we have um, a, a certain mindset running around in a certain very minute group of people that, you know, uh, think a certain way about different religions, especially the Muslim religion uh, currently for, you know, the wars over the last years or whatnot. But that's you shouldn't be doing that. That's that's not acceptable. Um, they, they can worship whoever they want to worship. And I think in America, we we allow freedom of religion. Um, and you know, they weren't terrorizing anybody. They were worshiping in their mosque and I don't think it's uh, anybody's place to go terrorize them because of it. I think that was a sad act. Yeah. I definitely believe in uh, freedom of religion, you know, so, um, I, I don't have any problems with anyone practicing their religion as long as it doesn't, uh, uh you know, hurt anyone. And yeah, you know, they, they do have the right to practice their religion. Now we do. Do we have proof of exactly why or what happened here? Uh, I think they're still is... investigating that. Okay. The FBI mm -hmm. is involved. They got a ten thousand dollar reward out for any yeah. information. Yeah. So you know, I mean, it, it's not really going to serve to help anything there if someone went out and targeted these guys uh, simply because of their religion. You know. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, this is the world that we live in. Uh, they also have the rights to protect themselves. That's why we all believe that, you know, we, we should have the, the ability to protect ourselves. And churches have been targeted by lots of people, right? There was a um, uh, basically a white supremacist that targeted a church and went in there and slowly killed a bunch of black people. Yep. Yeah. You know, so th this kind of thing oh, is uh, horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, yeah. go ahead, Walter. No, I mean. What what uh, you shouldn't be doing that stuff, you know. As long as people aren't using that facility to preach uh, some of the stuff that gets preached by certain religions, so um, yeah, I think I mean, and, or using it as a staging ground or a place to rile people up, and that could happen in any religion. But 
Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, one has more of a, 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 a history of it than another. So I've yeah, but who's the decider of that? I mean, who knows? Well, I mean, like I said, I, well, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's pretty obvious because, when the guy because so, because people can say. I mean, this is where freedom of speech comes in, right? People can say, "Hey, you know, <laughs> you got you gun guys, you're preaching hate and blah blah blah," and then just say, "You know what? We're going to get these gun guys." Am I saying and, and shut them that? No, no, no. That? I'm no, I'm not saying no, that. No, you no, said no, that, no yeah. but I'm. Are the gun guys, most of them saying we need to, you know, um, you know, overthrow the government and stuff like that? No, if I'm I, not. If I said that, I'd get a visit. Yeah. Well, but, what I'm saying to you is, and we don't know that these people, simply because they're Muslim, are saying I didn't, that. I, I don't know. know if that place had anything to do with that, but yeah. there are instances where that's happening, and it's happening sure. all over. And you can't just turn a blind eye to it at times. Absolutely so. not. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, during World War II or, yeah, I think during World War II, you know, there were Nazi rallies held in Madison Square Garden. Nobody that, bombed that. That was before the war started. <laughs> okay. Okay. That, well, the, before once, World War II. Okay. So once, before the war. So once, after that, what then? I just, there weren't no rallies for the Nazis, I guarantee to you. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> You mean every, before, every, every, that, every, that was before America got into it, right? Everybody forgets there used to be censorship in this country of right. television, well, the early TV, radio, everything. You couldn't say, you couldn't, there, were, there wouldn't have been no internet in the 40s, sorry. They would have shut it down, just like that. You wouldn't have any choice. Yeah, what, I, what I'm saying is that, you know, simply because of who you, you are or who someone perceives no, you well, are. It's I, like people who are out there attacking, you know, I, I think if, if someone's attacking someone because they're Muslim, that's bullshit. You shouldn't well, do that. Yeah, and there's people, attacking, there's people attacking Sikhs because they look like no, they're no, Muslim. No, yeah, yeah. And that, know, that, I'm, not, I'm not for any of that, you know. That, that's when, all someone, when someone decides to commit an act of terrorism, when someone decides they want to do things to hurt people, then yes, that's where they become my enemy. Or use the cover of a religion to do that. Sure, that's you know, but people or, who are practicing their religion shouldn't be targeted yeah. targeted simply because they're practicing. No, their no, religion. no. I'm, you know that you don't want. I don't want to pitch and throwing throwing fire bombs through people's window just because you don't yeah. like the, the the what they wear in their head or something. You know that's not that's not mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. because you know that could what comes around goes around in my world. So. Just as easy as that could happen to them, it can happen to me. So, yeah, um, you know. So hopefully, if if that's what happened here in this case, someone will catch up to those guys. Yeah, not, well, nine yeah. times out of ten, they find that they usually find out who it did it. Did it. So yeah, um, pretty cowardly. And, and and I think you'll find that people like us don't do things like that. I mean, I'm not, I, I, I don't I don't hate anyone for their religion. You know, I, I don't want I don't I don't want to fire bomb through my window. So you know, yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. what I what I want is personally is freedom and everyone to live their lives. If you're not hurting anyone, if you're and not, and, you know. And, and don't screw with anybody else. Yeah, exactly. You know, like uh, as, as as close to freedom as we can get, you know. Well, yeah, we have, we have tons of that. As long as you don't, there's there's always got to be a boundary someplace. You know, you can have this freedom. Oh, what is freedom? Right. You know, I mean, you know, how far do you go with the freedom part? Yeah. Um, before you start, you know breaking the law which you got to have some laws so mm. um absolutely yeah you know do you have some news things uh walter news things let's see i yeah yes. was, what, what, oh, what would you, you like you, to... you had brought up the uh u.s palm closing their doors yeah that's crazy yeah and uh, that's that's i mean that's a serious brand yeah so now um, just explain what u.s palm is for anyone out there who doesn't know kevin do you know about u.s palm uh, I'm not. I, I won't be able to explain them in detail. You're, I'm not familiar with them. I just don't know tons about them. U.S. Palm is kind of like um, Magpul, just okay. not as extreme in size. So they make magazines and they make uh, grips for AKs and stuff like that, and and a, and a real popular brand. But you know, maybe they just couldn't adapt to the changing situation. I don't know. Yeah, about the economy going down, and that, that's sad to see any any you know yeah. good company that's not able to make it now. Especially, especially when. A popular brand like that it's not like some it's not like some harebrained brand that that everybody loves to hate you know it's not that way with us palm so um maybe they just got too big for their pants and when they're you know and they couldn't keep it going once uh once things slowed down like they have because it's pretty it's pretty uh pretty tough tough market right now for ev all, everybody out there so is now is there anything you know is there anything that and i always wondered this you know, for the consumer, you know, you watch companies like this that aren't able to make it because of the tough times. Is there something 
that we should be doing as the 2A community? Is there, you know, should no. we, and I know guys like like you, uh, Walter, Hank, myself, I know we put out videos and stuff like that, try to bring people into the new cool products, but I'm just kind of throwing out there, is there anything more we should be doing so we see less of this? I, I don't, you know, I, I, I believe in the, no nobody's too big to fail. Okay. Because, you know, what do you do when you prop, <laughs> Who's gonna prop? Who's well? First, who's gonna prop up a gun business? Nobody's gonna do it. So, <laughs> unless somebody comes in and buys their, I think they yeah. said in their article somebody's gonna some of their products are gonna be kept being made. Yeah. They probably made arrangements, but you know uh, what I know of US, U.S. Palm, I and mean, they, they make several things. But I think the most popular thing, at least in the AK world, is their AK magazine. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and so far as I know, it's a pretty popular magazine. I think. Here, here's what I think from my point of There's view. There's a lot of competition yeah. right now in that. Yeah, area, I, so. well, yes, and I think that um, what we're doing is if we're if you're really a gun guy, you've been doing what what you've been doing. You're I mean, buy their stuff. Yeah, what are we gonna do? Get some money from the government yeah, to no, buy I, extra stuff? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like we've, hmm. we've been buying things, we've been supporting gun companies. I think um, a lot of gun companies don't properly recognize us. So let's okay. start there. I think that they don't run their businesses properly. There's some gun companies out there that see all, see so much of this in the wrong way. So I've seen lots of companies, for example, that um, they got caught up in this thing because they read statistics somewhere and they said, hey, women have all the money. So they're selling guns and like, let's sell guns to women. So they started making guns pink and then start, you know, maybe like, oh, we'll get some hot chicks and they'll help us sell stuff. <laughs> I think, and and I get all of that. I understand it, but you know, for the most part, I think we all know. Like, you know, even with me and Lola, you know, I'm the person who's usually making those kinds of decisions. Even though Lola's into guns and all that, and she may know what she wants, but she comes to me. So if you're going to make the gun pink, she's not into pink guns. <laughs> if you make it pink, that's definitely you know. If you're not really analyzing this properly and thinking about who your audience is and who's making these kinds of decisions, or even if you are targeting women like they have the money, you should still realize that for the most part they're leaning on the male figures in their life to help them with those decisions. Yep. And don't don't forget that you know. And there's a, there's lots of things that these companies do. I think that lead them down the wrong path. You know, lots of companies went out and just got machinery and just built AR-15. They, they, over, they over expanded during the good times. Yeah. So there's lots of ways that they go wrong. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's capitalism. That's the way the world right. works. Somebody will if, pick up their stuff. and. Yeah. If you see it the wrong way, you build the wrong things, you cater to the wrong people, you do the wrong kind of marketing, you waste your time. <laughs> like, you know, there's still companies out there marketing in magazines, if you could believe that nonsense. Well, you, you, you know, you could, who, who the hell reads a gun magazine nowadays? And if you read a gun magazine, do you actually buy one? Do you? Um, you, you, you have a different... I'll be honest with you. All mine come uh, through my subscription to the NRA. I get a bunch of... Here, I'll show you. You don't believe me. Okay, you're talking... Okay, because you're an NRA member, you get the NRA's magazines that they sometimes send out to people who are in the NRA. Here, and I can tell you that, um, you know, I've probably <laughs> read 10% of this. Yeah, well, there you go. Okay, so yeah. Walter's old school. He was born no, in the 50s. No, no, wait, hang on, hang on. No, I wasn't <laughs> born in the 50s. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Yeah. Okay, you still you still read the gun magazines. Go ahead, tell us. No, actually, I get a lot of them. They, they send me a lot of them trying to get me to advertise in them, and, and I don't read them all. Every once in a while, I see something, and then I look at it. Yeah. But I'm, that's just me. I'm kind of busy now, so... Yeah. But, uh, but there's lots of companies out there that still think that's a great thing. And I think it's great. I think you, if you want to, if you want to, to, to take out something from a magazine and post it on your wall, knock yourself out and frame it and all yeah. of that. But people nowadays in this modern world turn to social media to get they're, this kind of information. They're, no, we not reading. I, how do, how do we say this? There's there's always going to be some magazine stuff because always going to people look at a magazine, um, but yeah, not. Oh, in, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not saying the magazine's going to die. Radio hasn't died. No, radio's awesome medium, um, <laughs> but um, you're not going to get the numbers that you had before. Just say that. So yeah. um, you got to take it all in 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 moderate. You got to do the you got to do the publishing thing in moderation. You know. I yeah. Mean, 
I, I think I think a lot of companies just aren't savvy. I think they just don't get it. They're just old school, and they've been selling. Here's what I think, Kevin. Same I think way every time. Yeah. They've been selling stuff on Obama and whatever you know, all kinds of crap going on for lots of years, and um, like people are saying, you know, this is kind of like the Trump effect, you oh, know, because a lot of people had the Hillary strategy. So yeah. I think the range one says how ironic that Trump winning is putting so many good businesses out of business. Because well, who, um, pro yeah. to Second Amendment guys are relaxing. Yeah, well, you know, I think that these companies just thought that we're, it's going to go up forever. It's like the stock market. Well, you know, oh, if you think the stock market's going to go up forever, that's why we have crashes. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I know I, the products are kind of going. I know the product. I know the industry suffering. I will say, I guess, and it's kind of ironic too that training uh, has actually ticked up a little bit. But yet, you know, products has gone down. So it's like guys are finally starting to realize I should train with the stuff I have because I'm not in a buying frenzy. So I can, you know, go out and spend a couple hundred bucks yeah. on class. But is it is it going up or I mean, is it going down or is it correcting? We've had unnatural it's a, it's a correction. Yeah, there's eight. There was eight years of frenzy, constant mm -hmm. frenzy up and down and up and down. And so now when it goes normal again, nobody knows what to do. Because a lot of these people weren't in the business but when it was normal. Right. <laughs> I've been in the business when it's normal, and you're wondering, why isn't the phone ringing? Well, the phone isn't ringing because it just isn't. So you got to do something different to make the phone ring. But when the people have never been in that 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 environment, they don't know what to do. They've, they've based their whole existence on on a shooting or, or political turmoil. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So that's that's what I think is going on. And for my per, like my own personal experience as a gun YouTube guy, I'll just tell this little story. If if you guys will indulge me, and, <laughs> and I won't, you know, I won't tell you what company this was. But I was um, in Arizona, <laughs> sitting down in a company <laughs> that we uh, we we all know, including now. And, um, you know, I was talking to the owner of this company and we were, we were talking, we we're vibing. I'm like sitting on the sofa right next to him. We're talking about gun stuff, you know, and we're just going at it. And there was a, you know, there was a female uh, celebrity shooter sitting across from me that wasn't really saying anything or that was not contributing to the conversation. And so we were talking about all this kinds of different stuff and whatever. And I thought, oh, you know, this this guy gets it. And, you know, he understands where this stuff is all going. And at the end of that, he was like, you know, he sent one of his boys, got a whole bunch of stuff, gave it to the female shooter. And I was like, OK. And then he was like, hey, Hank Strange, you know, thanks for coming by to see you. Oh. And I was like, oh, OK, that, because. You know, ultimately, that's how this goes. That's how a lot of people see what's going on here. You know, him talking to me and, and us vibing on the future of guns and where it's going and, and the industry and all that kind of stuff didn't mean anything. Ultimately, he was like, oh, you know, women will sell this stuff because we're guys and we're and it's true we are guys and we will look at women. But that doesn't mean we will look at those women to make these decisions. So I'm not trying to I'm not trying to bring down women in the industry. I think there's lots of women in the industry that are genuine, that are real shooters, that are being honest and and straightforward, that are way better than me and will kick my ass any day, know way more stuff than I do. But when you see this, when you see everything this way and this is what you value, this is how you wind up like this. This is how you wind up just making so, so many ARs. This is how you just wind up like, oh, the industry is just going to keep buying. These guys that are out here are just going to keep buying. All we have to do is throw this thing at them. You know, that's how you get here. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a little a little interesting. I always wondered, you know, from a from a kind of a marketing perspective, like if you with the you know the access of social media, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. If you have people that are actually, you know, man or woman, if the people are out there working it, how much money can you save supplying them to do your marketing for you versus spending, you know, fifty thousand dollars just to get a print? You know what I mean? Like, I, so I think, I think you save a lot. It, it kind of shocks me because I know I, I went up to some companies kind of like their widget or whatever it was, you know, never seen it before. I'm like, oh, cool. I said, tell you what, um, I'm not going to drop 
400 bucks on it because I don't know it works. But if you have a TNE model, you know, send it to me. I'll send it back. And if it's a good model, I'll, I'll talk about it. And if I really like it, I'll, you know, maybe reach out to you, see if I can even buy the TNE, you know, if I like it. Um, and so many guys are like, well, guys always want stuff for free. I'm like, yeah, dude, I don't want anything for free. I just want you to give me the TNE model. I will send it back to you. And if I really, really like it, I will buy your product. And then I will talk about your product and I will introduce your product to other people. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, dude, yeah. I'll argue with you. I don't think I don't think it so much has to do with getting things for free or giving things for free to people. I, I understand there's people who get into this whole thing to get free stuff, and I get that, right? I get it. If you're a gun guy, why wouldn't you want to get gun stuff for free? Oh, well, true. Yeah. Now, what it really comes down to is can you identify who are actual influencers in whatever market it is that you are serving, that you are manufacturing things for? Can you identify who is a legitimate influencer versus someone who isn't? Right. I think that's what it comes down to, you know, and if you can't if you can't identify that, if you can identify it, if you realize like, hey, there's people who listen to this person, um, you know, when when they when they make these decisions, they'll turn to this person. And you identify that that helps. That's, but that's only part of the formula. You know, the, the, another part of the formula is you can build a crap ton of stuff because you think everyone's going to buy it and then everyone doesn't buy it. You know, oh. if, you're, if, if your strategy is, oh, I used to sell this, um, this, uh, this magazine for a gun and I used to sell it for $10 and, and now because of, you know, political wins or whatever, I can sell this magazine for $50 and that's going to exist forever. Then you're batshit crazy. No. Hey, I just bought, speaking of, speaking of maybe that, I just bought some magazines from SIG for my mm -hmm. MPX directly right. from SIG, 20 round <laughs> MPX mags. And um, they were five hundred dollars each. Nine ninety five a piece, my friend. Nine, there you go. What? So it's coming. That's down. right. That's right off. That's right off a of Sig's website. So how much were they before? Well, those I I know thirty round Sig mags probably pushing thirty five forty bucks a piece. Yeah. Um, so now that's re I mean, because that that's a good these idea. Are, of these a are twenty rounders that are a little bit smaller, but still nine ninety five. Yeah. I mean, that's that's that's. I couldn't well, pass it up. I bought eleven. They gave me one. And free shipping. Okay, so, that's cool. But yeah, isn't yeah. that reasonable? Because first of all, Sig makes that gun and then deliberately well, yeah. doesn't make it work on a magazine that already exists, like well, a Glock magazine yeah. or something. They they probably got two dollars in the magazine. So at at the quantities they do the stuff. So, so at ten dollars they're still getting you. Oh, yeah, why did they just sell it at ten bucks in the first place? Because they didn't have to. Yeah. So why are they selling it at ten bucks now? Because I got a shit pile of them sitting somewhere, probably. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so why, why why can I buy a little why, too late? Why, why can I buy an AR receiver for twenty five dollars? Yeah. Because they got a shit pile of them sitting someplace. I yeah. I bought I bought I just ordered some from Centerfire Systems. Anybody that's um I ordered some AK receivers for the seven six two by uh, I mean for the AK seventy four twelve fifty a piece. I ordered, I ordered, I got 10 of them. I mean, it's like, I'll do something with them. I'll build some guns or I'll, or I'll just sell them. You know, and I, if I even sell them for $25, I made hundred percent profit. Yeah. I, mean, I think the problem here though, with the industry is that ultimately it doesn't matter how much they cut these prices. They can't get uh, the money that they need to pay the bills. Well, if you have if you, if you've got a whole, whole building full of machinery, no, you won't make it. There's no way. But if if you own your machines, yeah, and and you, and you and you thought about this a little bit ahead of time, you'll do all right. You'll get through it. Yeah. Um, also, if you're not in debt, if you're not heavily right, in debt right. and stuff like that, if yeah. you don't own, if you don't owe, owe everything to the bank, then yeah, you know. Um, and then if you have the ability to pivot real fast and then realize that things are changing and you know all that. Yeah, kind I mean, of stuff. you know, there's a possibility that U.S. Palm didn't want to come down off their prices. And when they finally did, it was too late. You know, they're kind of U.S. Palm is very proud of their stuff. I don't know if you know. I mean, it's yeah. it's, it's I, but you know, people like Magpul and stuff. They're like, let's get this shit out of here. Let's so well, let's lower the price mm -hmm. and let's and let's move it. You know, and there's different yeah. business models, and some people's business model doesn't work. Yeah, so, ultimate, ultimately, it could be anything. You know. Yeah. One other thing I think, and I'm not saying this is the the, the ultimate issue by any means, but um, and I be I talk to a lot of my my friends about this all the time. Um, 
when we went through this whole trend over the last 10, 12 years, it's when our guys coming back over from overseas and everybody wanted to be tactical or tactical, <laughs> as it could be. You know, every everything that came out was was marketed around this 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 guy just just decked out from head to toe, and he's jumping out of a helicopter and doing all these doing you know he's got gun, a beard. He's you badass. Know, yeah. with, with, with <laughs> to sell a flashlight. I'm like, you know, it's it's it was it going to that mindset, and I think now a lot of guys have spent a lot of money on a lot of crap they have no idea how to use. And so it's like, okay, I'm not making that mistake again. Nah. And now it's more like, okay, we got a bunch of common people. They just want to have good quality products, but we're still in such this. We need to uh, sell it to the tactical, not tactical, tactical community. And I don't think that that community is as strong as it used to be at one point. So a lot of stuff isn't moving. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, 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 it's the market's flooded with tactical. Yeah, yeah. 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 When, it, when, when it when it becomes kind of a joke, you know, people are making fun of it and and things like that. Then it's like, you know, really. You know, it's like wearing uh, flannel shirts and all that stuff and beards, and acting like you're a, like you're a lumberjack when you can't even change the tire on your car. Um, <laughs> it don't work. You know, sorry. Right. Um, isn't a lumberjack supposed to be able to chop down a tree? Yeah. Yeah. For you and me so, and everybody else, yeah. in about five minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And kill um, some deer and eat it for lunch at the same time. You know. You yeah. Know? Yeah, th I think there's just certain things that are fads. I think the tactical thing is a fad, but I think, uh, uh, in, and I think we were all into that. I think we're all guilty of being into that. I know that I don't want anyone to recognize that I'm tactical. So the fad now is actually going the other way, where most people don't want to be recognized in any way as being a gun guy, or you know, you don't want to put that out there. So. Like I like to wear boots and I've stopped and I've always done that. Even when I lived in New York, I, I wore boots all the time uh, here in Florida where everyone wears sandals. I wear boots, but I stopped doing it because it, there's people who are just assuming something because you got boots on. So you look like you're, you know. Yeah, this is like people assuming that you're your former spec ops just because you got a beard. I'm like, dude, no, I'm just, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I just I like a beard. Just trying, yeah. Nothing you know, to get trying to hide beard. some bumps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you know, and, that's the thing. and you know what? It's funny. A lot of people don't understand that about um, uh, African Americans. Uh, that a lot of times because of uh, our skin tone, we can have um, a fungus that if you shave and it gets in there, it bumps you up real bad. Oh, so yeah, a, yeah. a lot of us wear beards when you can. And for 12 years, I had to have a clean face, and it hurt like hell. So now that I can actually wear a beard, I like to let it grow out. But I've, I've had yeah. several people come up, and they'll be like, you know, we get to talking guns, and I'm putting them through training. And before I can get to a bio, they're like, hey, uh, were you tier one? I'm like, why, why did you say that? It's certainly not the not the beer belly you see. So it must be the beard that you're going by, right? It's like, no, dude. Yeah. Look, God. But somebody did say on, your, um, on the comments here, I think it was kind of slick. He said that a beard makes your flashlight work. <laughs> yeah, I saw if you're gonna have a tactical flashlight, you gotta have a beard to make beard, it work. Yeah, the beard makes you bulletproof. I yeah. just can't grow a beard, so whatever. Yeah. It's okay. You know, it I'm just, gonna hate it on everyone with a beard. <laughs> I see the, the clean face guys on the on the, on the spot with me. That's cool. Yeah. Right. No, no. I mean, you know, I get it. I understand. One day, just, one day. Yeah, just can't. You know, <laughs> some of us just a beard challenged. I, I don't I don't understand why people um, I, I do get it. And it's a marketing. It was marketing genius, by the way, to portray to that community or the people that were just joining into it and like, oh, man, I'm going to buy my first AR-15. and I'm going to buy a play carrier. You know, true story. I had a guy come to a pistol one class. Uh, he showed up to a pistol one course with a play carrier on. You know? <laughs> you know, I asked him, I'm like. What the hell? What's up? You know, we're just here to work on some the, the step above concealed carry is what we're working on. I'm like, why the play carry? I'm curious. He's like, well, you got to be ready for everything. And you said this is going to prepare me for more real world. And I'm like, yeah, like how to move and shoot, how to do a, a tactical reload, you know, um, understanding what real world is with a gun. Yeah, but why did you? And he's like, well, I just want to be prepared. He wore the damn thing too, the whole class. I'm like, okay, man. Yeah, you know, I gotta yeah. wear my plate carrier when I go to McDonald's to get a burger. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think you know it was one of those things that we all got into. I think uh, Tactical, as you're as you're calling it, Tactical definitely sold a lot more stuff than like paint guns. Yeah, practical. Uh, but yeah, not practical. But yeah, it did. Yeah. I just I just think now that it's it's leaving. It's kind of like think it's the same way to me. 
you take a lot of gun companies and a couple, a couple of them are more guilty than others. And I know you had teased me about this once before, Hank, but you take the gun companies that, oh, forget the civilian population. If it, it's all about military, you know, mm-hmm. not even sometimes not even law enforcement. It's just all about military. And that's where we're going to make our bank. And now that the mil- you know, military is not renewing a lot of the contracts. And I was like, oh, hey, guys, we remember you now. Here we, we are. You know, help. Like, help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, it's kind of sad. Yeah, I think there's lots of things that led to that, you know, including the fact that it just, you know, you just look badass. I mean, you know, if you've ever gone to like a two gun or three gun match and, you know, you've seen that dude who's totally decked out in all this super tactical gear and it's got the beard and everything, you know, you're like, oh, uh, this is a thing. So it's me, happened. It's happened. You know, you're just unapproachable. You know what I mean? Like you won't intimidate me. I don't I don't care how much crap you got on. You know, I, I don't it doesn't it doesn't bother me. I, I think that. You know, I say it humbly. I've seen guys all decked up in all kind of gear and I'll just come in and in jeans and run circles around with a gun. Uh, but it doesn't it. I know there have been several times to where people are just like intimidated to even talk to you. Like so you miss an opportunity to get guys into what you're doing because they might be real new or curious and are like, I'm going to talk to anybody but that dude because he just, you know, it looks like he might toss a grenade down my pants or something. You know, it's just kind of crazy. But yeah. I don't know. Keep his own. No, I agree with you. I think there's lots of things that have been done that makes people intimidated. Uh, You know, even some people's approach to showing stuff makes folks out there intimidated because they feel like, oh, you know, I'm not I'm not super uh, tacticalized like that guy or I don't have all this training. So I can't deal with this thing, which is not really true. You know, if you just take the steps one foot in front of the other, you can do all this stuff. It's not really super complicated, and you're not required to know everything or know the names of everything. Nope. You Just know? don't act like yeah. you do when you don't. Oh man, yeah. it cracks me up every time you show up. Guys, be like, I have one. This is a funny story too. That I don't know a lot about lever actions. Like, if I have weaknesses, it's going to be lever actions. Um, oh. Really being dynamic with a shotgun. Um, and I'm, you I'm know, glad you brought up lever actions. Ah, see. Oh, oh, oh. So, Check this out. That's pretty. What this, caliber would that be? Check this out. What is that? This is a forty-five seventy. This is, is that from a Henry? Henry. Yeah, this is from Henry. This is the uh, all weather. Oh. You know, stainless steel forty-five seventy. Look, I'm slowly gonna muzzle everyone. Oh, that's yeah. not. Nope. That's not in the safe direction, Hank. I, it's, I, yeah. <laughs> I got. I got something to beautiful. show you then. <laughs> beautiful. This is a that's beautiful pretty. gun right here. Yeah. Uh, so I just figured this is like Henry makes a lot of really nice uh, rifles and and. Uh, I figured I'd bring some in for show and tell today, but yeah, this is one of the most beautiful ones. And forty-five seventy, I mean, this thing could kill a dinosaur. I got something to show you. Uh oh, what is it? What is it? Don't tell me. <laughs> I don't have it out right now, but I have another. I have a forty-five seventy lever also. Oh, you it's, do? It's a Marlin. Oh, you got the Marlin? But it's got a okay. sixteen what? and a half inch barrel. When you come on, then when you come on with the Marlin, we'll just have uh, convenient technical difficulties. <laughs> and here, there's another lever action in here, but can you guys read? Oh, this? I don't got one of those because yeah. I didn't get to go. Yeah, you don't have this. No, I don't. You don't have this. I'm pretty sure you don't have this. This is thousand man shoot. So there's a 22 lever action in here that I'm gonna pull out probably in a few minutes when we when we all start showing our guns. But Kevin was talking about lever action, yeah. so go ahead. The Dude, guns got I the gun. enough about me. I can shoot them. Don't get. But you're always, always t- and I guess I'm too humble. I'll tell people, yeah, I can shoot any gun. I can shoot a lever action, but it's a difference between saying I can shoot it, name the calibers, name the, the manufacturers, and saying that I know that system, like the back of my hand. I don't. If it's one land on the ground and I have to pick it up to defend myself, I can run it. Yeah, they make it I go back. Move it, right? Yeah. Um, so I was being honest with this guy in the gun store one day, and he, he was like thinking about coming <laughs> up. I know where this is going. <laughs> he wanted to come take a handgun class, and we had talked about it, and he was like, all right, man. Yeah, cool. I'm gonna come a couple weeks. I'm gonna sign up online and come take your course. I'm like, cool. And he was like, Hey, um, can you tell me what that gun is? And I was just a, a customer at this store myself. I just hang out there sometimes. And I'm like, No. Nah. And I thought I, I said, and it must be it's a Henry. I can tell it's a Henry, but really don't know much about it. And he looked at me with. He was like, What do you mean? I was like, Dude, I I, I know it's a lever action. I'm pretty sure Henry makes it. I don't know anything else beyond that. And he refused to take a handgun class because of it. Yeah. He's like, you're like you're supposed to- we're, get, we're getting Walter. Let me let me. Uh, we're gonna have to like. Yeah, I'm still in the house. Hang on. Yeah, Walter. We're gonna have to. Uh, we're gonna have to mute Walter. Yeah. yeah. 
Because but this guy was yeah, um, and he's giving feedback because he put his headsets down. He had to go get guns, Kevin. Oh, okay, show right. off. Yeah, he, dude, this, this dude literally refused to take uh, a, a handgun class for me because I couldn't break down specifics about that a lever action rifle. I'm like, okay. whatever, dude. I said part of the fun is always learning something new. So if a guy wants to say, hey man, I can I can teach you everything there is to know about these things, and I got the time, cool, let's let's do it, let's learn. But yeah, it's like people have this imagery of gun people, like yeah. Uh, and then it, well, it, sir, it, you have to unmute your microphone, and we muted it, so you're gonna have to unmute it. I'm man, trying to. You're thinking that. Yeah, every time, Walter, unmute your microphone. Well, hello. I don't know if he can hear us. Get the mute. <laughs> I'm trying to unmute it here, but it won't. He doesn't realize he's muted. You're muted, Walter. Am there I you go. Now? There okay, go. there you go. So I had right. to. You had to start the forty-five seventy thing. Oh. So I had to bring it out. You know. Maybe. Okay. So you want to have? Do you want to have a shootout right now? Right, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Cool kids, right now. So I don't think they're gonna make it, bud. <laughs> you don't. You don't want none of this, son. You know what? I, I, it's gonna be like the Hatfields and the McCoys <laughs> up in here. <laughs> I put a hurt on your ass. One thing, uh, Kevin, one thing I'm really terrible at is a country accent. <laughs> you yeah. You know son, I, yeah, son, I heard you trying to do it. Where you from, son? <laughs> Boy, where you live from? <laughs> You're not from around these parts. Oh, you ain't from around here. Where you from, boy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, lever actions are fun, though, Kevin. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah I've yeah. shot them, and I enjoy them. I have shot them, and I just, I just humbly tell people, like, I can shoot it. Like, if you gave me that beautiful yeah. machinery in your hand, I can yeah. shoot it. But if you say... Hey, you know, you know, strip it apart right now and put it back together and name all the parts. Like, uh, you know, yeah, but you I know could. what? It's it's you don't have. I don't think you have to know everything. I think the beautiful thing about life is learning, right? Yeah, and, and having yeah, yeah, yeah. you know adventures about learning about stuff. What were yeah, you gonna I say, could, Walter? I, I couldn't tell you how to take this all apart. Yeah, but I, I but, but I, I could I could figure it out if you give me enough time. Yeah. Yeah, there's a manual, and, and there's oh, this yeah. magical there's this magical thing that the Egyptians invented called YouTube. No. <laughs> The, inter the interweb. <laughs> if you go look on YouTube, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, Hickok Forty Five will show you how to take a, 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 you know, a lever action down. Oh yeah, you can find it on YouTube. Trust me, I, yeah. I, it's a valuable resource. Because there are times I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And then I go on there, and it's like, oh, that's how you do it. That was easy. You know? So, yeah, we'll have to have a forty-five seventy shoot off. Uh, uh, maybe we should. That yeah. sounds like fun. You know, it's not exactly cheap ammo, but hey, we'll throw it. <laughs> we'll throw, yeah, we'll neither throw lead. 50 cal, though, but. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so at least, uh, you know, well, you can reload 50 cal, but you can reload 4570 also. So Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I'm, uh, did I get some, I think I was going to get some reloading stuff so that, because Babyface P does all the reloading around here. You do your own reloading, right, Walter? No, not yet. I have stuff, oh. but I haven't done anything yet. I just... Oh, I guess we say lack motivation sometimes. Yeah. So did we have more news stuff that we wanted to hit? Did you guys hear the breaking news? Uh, this is on the firearm blog. Seven, six, two, seven, six, two is coming back. Okay. Oh, oh, with the military. Yeah. Seven, six, two rifle to replace M4 carbine interim combat service rifle solicitation released by so, the U S army. So I'm going to throw this out here. Yeah. Who so, yeah. who wants to who wants to get on the bandwagon that it'll be an AR-10? <laughs> what? Yeah. So the army's looking for you know apparently the army is just like on a path, a war path nowadays to change everything. Uh, yeah. What, if what AR-10 are they going to run? It's going to well, have to be a proprietary one to make sure that it runs properly. Well, that that I was kind of being facetious because. Uh. They don't. Well, uh, there's good there's good AR-10s out there. I just think, well, a lot of them are heavy, so I don't not, know if they if they if they're just going to give this to everyone. If everyone's going to go with, uh, with you know, something uh, 308, um, it's going to be heavy. The the things that you do to make it light are also going to create all the problems for you. Yeah. Down the road, so we'll see what happens. I don't have a lot yeah. of faith in the government or the military's. Uh, processes yeah. but this is open so if you you know what does that mean walter that means anyone can go in there now yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you, can, you well you have to be able to if you do that you gotta you gotta be able to provide them with the weapons so i mean okay. i if i gonna say oh yeah i can do it and it goes well we need a hundred thousand of them they like we oh, can we can build it now they want yeah. 50, of them. all we do is we subcontract it to somebody somewhere and then 
Yeah, and then they take over the contract, and you're kicked out the door. So yeah, um, it just depends. You know, <laughs> we can get you know we can get some child labor or something. You know, Maybe. and another thing, um, it's kind of hard. You know, there's you ever heard of a gun called a Barrett? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's like ever heard of Colt? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you ever heard of of a uh, Knight's Armament? Yeah, you know, there's I, lots of yeah. There's, I mean, I think there's already a lot of options out there. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what they pick. Will they go something actually new? I mean, you got the FN Scar, which works fine, um, yeah. but for some oh. reason, they don't they don't like the Scar. I oh, guess good. that is a beautiful system. Well, so I know there are people that think the Scar 17 is a little bit too heavy. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are, we what is what is caliber round? What do you want out of it? It's heavy, mommy. I can't carry it. <laughs> I'm like, just, I'm no. just saying. I'm yeah, just so it's going to be heavier. It's a heavier platform. It's going. Yeah. Heavy. You, know, yeah, you know, know what happens if you take a 308 AR platform and you make that thing five and a half pounds? Well, there is the DPMS um, AR, the new one that's uh, a lot smaller, and I think who else that I just saw also has one. I don't know if it's um. um PO, POF, um, I think they have. So a, what? So let me ask this question: Why doesn't the army just adopt AKs and call it oh, a day? Oh come on, come on! Uh, You're an AK guy. You love AKs. Yeah, you think <laughs> AKs would, are would never, awesome? Would, if they're not, did, if they're if they're so awesome, why doesn't the army just adopt them? You just like stirring shit up, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> they're not gonna take. I guarantee. I guarantee you, there's people out there that are asking that question. It's not high tech enough for the U.S. military. Yeah, it well, doesn't. Okay, it doesn't require all the specialized machinery and knowledge, and uh -huh. it's not going to work. Doesn't have enough whiz bangs. So, yeah, it's not gonna work. well, you know, I think that um, I think there's the army is you know creating opportunities, maybe oh, trying yeah. to save some companies. Hopefully, somebody new gets involved. So. Mm -hmm. I hope there's a new a new face, maybe, or some new ideas. Um, not the same old thing, just put with a new piece of Picatinny rail on it. So, mm -hmm. um, or a different color, but we'll see, see what happens. Yeah. You know, uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to yeah. be, a, it's going to be a bumpy ride for sure, man. I see lots of crazy stuff. Yeah. Coming down, I mean, I don't, coming down the turnpikes. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, like you said. Yeah. Um, is there anybody talking about it? AR-10 is easy to break down and toss new parts while in the field. Yeah, it is, but it works just like an AR-15 and still has the same problems that an AR-15 has. Yeah, and it's definitely yeah. They it's, get dirty. Yeah, yeah. But, but you got a bigger <laughs> cartridge, you can shoot further. So I mean, you know. Yeah. That's, that's now, are you bringing less ammo? Well, you're gonna. Well, it all depends. Mm -hmm. Is your guy 110 pounds and and can barely uh pull his pants up, or is he <laughs> or a female? Mm hmm. That's one of the reasons the Israelis like the went back from the Galil to the AAR platform, the mm -hmm. M4 platform, because it's lighter. Um, so the female soldiers have an easier time with it. Because um, uh, the 308 Galil is a beast, too. It's heavy. So is there, well, speaking of Galil, yeah. There we oh, go. you got a Galil? You pulling up a Galil? Laying around there? Just yeah. sitting. <laughs> Hold on. Let's lock it. Let's lock it on Walter. That's an old school. This is actually a uh, Sentry Arms Golani, but it's the same idea. I just replaced the folding stock with a wood stock because it's a way more better um, platform to shoot from with the wood stock. But, um, yeah. So, these rifles are not light either, but, you know, they're damn defendable. Um, but, you know, who knows? See what happens. Maybe we need to go back to good old lever action, Dan. Yeah. Let's get him. When, when will the army adopt lever actions again? <laughs> uh, I don't because, know. I mean, like, what if you're out there and you come up against dinosaur aliens? <laughs> yeah. Dinosaur and, aliens. And 308 is just not big enough. <laughs> need that 4570. I tell you what, you can yeah, punch some holes exactly. into something with some 4570. Yeah. It knocks a big ass hole and stuff. So. <laughs> yeah. Kind of the reason why I bought it. I actually ordered this gun at the SHOT Show. They had it on special. Um, and I saw it. And the good thing I bought it because so, I have I have not seen another one like it with the, that short a barrel since then. So. Okay. So this 45, so this is a Marlin. So this is side loading, right? Correct. It has a, okay. 
Yeah, right so there. that's the difference. That's one of the differences. We can show this to Kevin. I don't know. Kevin might not really be super well, into I mean, this, but you know, this yeah, this you have to open you have to open up here and um like you know bring out your tube. It goes through that. the tube on the bottom. Yeah. Goes through the gate on the side of the receiver. Yeah. Now Hank, what's the capacity of that one? Uh, I believe this one here is four. Yeah, I have no idea how many what the capacity of this is. Don't ask plus me. one, I think, on this one. Yeah. So I, I, I could but not tell you an honest answer to that right now. What so the capacity now, the 4570, I know, is a beast of a round. So mm -hmm. what would be the ideal game to hunt with that? Dinosaurs. <laughs> Besides dinosaurs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, we got to get you a dinosaur to shoot somewhere. <laughs> yeah, right. elephants. I don't know. I mean. Get you yeah. over this dinosaur fixation. Yeah. I'm not like a big game hunter. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to. I just want to I mean, shoot shit up. Forty-five seventy's been around since. So you know, I'm hunting like engines, engine blocks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but forty-five seventy's been around since like Buffalo Bill or Wild Bill Cody times. You know, shooting yeah, buffalo and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, um, wild hogs, which you talked about before. Yeah. Yeah. That a good mm -hmm. round. I have a funny yeah. time how I punk somebody into taking me hog hunting. I have to tell you guys about that. Oh, so you are going hog hunting? Uh huh. Yep, okay. I made. I bullied my way into it. I, I told you it was gonna happen, man. Okay, cool. So that's good. Who's taking you hog hunting? Um, I, I put Mister when uh, um, you know Mister Lasort was up here for my uh, event this past weekend. Went out to the range. Uh, I'll release a couple of the videos, but we shot my three hundred blackout mm -hmm. uh, head gun, and we shot my that sidearm, the ten mil, the ones I had on last time. And I told him, I said, hey, the rule was I wasn't gonna shoot these things, so I had a hog in my sights, and so I kept messing with them and. You know, since NRA is in Dallas next year, he uh, promised he was going to hook that up. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. You're going to have to go do some hunts. If you, if you guys are coming down, we all have to go out and hunt some hogs, man. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. I'm down. I, I don't I don't eat pork, you know, but we'll donate the meat. If I, I, I'm, all, if I'm I, all about donating the meat. And some of them things yeah, I've heard have diseases and all kind of weird stuff, but I want to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> want to they're, kill they're, them. they're a pestilence anyway. So, yes, they are. They're ruining yeah. agriculture. You know, we got to help the farmers out, you know? Yeah. So you know, what? Um, what? Well, let me ask you this. You know what this reminds me of, and I didn't, I didn't think about this, but did you guys see these? There's like, this was in the news that there were some guys fishing in, um, I guess in in uh, in the uh, off the coast of Miami, and they were, I guess this is someone who's in some kind of reality show right now, and they were pulling the sharks up and like shooting them in the gills. Did you guys see that? What? No. Yeah. Is that legal? This, uh, I don't. I, I don't know. I think it may, it may be it may be legal to shoot a shark or something like that. Who knows? Well, it's typically, Florida. Typically, but, a lot of times when they're when you're fishing for shark and before they bring them in a the boat, they. But yeah. some of these people but just the, shoot them yeah, for the they, heck of it, and they don't. Yeah, bring these them guys in the were boat. doing some stupidness. So I think you know that's like floating out there. I saw that on the news today. I um, read. Yeah. No telling. You know, back yes. in the old days, people did all this stuff, but everybody didn't have a, a cell phone or a camera, and they never yeah. saw any of it. Now everybody records yeah. everything, and they yeah. put it on YouTube, and then when they get they get arrested, they're like, do some stupidness, and you know for sure your boys. Don't put it on YouTube. If, if, you see your, if you're doing something stupid, and you see your boys recording, you know Shoot what you're them. doing. <laughs> he shot, it was a hammerhead shark, too. Yeah, you throw their you throw their cell phones into the ocean, because <laughs> and well, and that's probably still not going to help you because everyone's got the cloud now. So if that yeah, video went true. up to the cloud, you're not you're that's never. That's true. I forgot that. about that. <laughs> so you know, just that. don't do stupid. Don't do stupid things. Okay. Shot a hammerhead yeah. shark to death, and he was wearing a "Make America Great" hat. Oh God! Great, <laughs> Make America Great Again hat. As he <laughs> shot, it was Trump's fault. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. So terrible. So yeah, what, you know, whatevs. Okay, let's show some guns. What kind of guns do you? So, uh, Kevin, didn't you have some guns that you wanted, or something you wanted to quiz Walter with? Oh yeah. So Walt, there he goes. Get look, he's yeah. running. Let's fix this. Yeah. Don't put go. your headsets back on, Walter. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a guy that likes the old stuff. Yeah, Walter, we're gonna we're gonna show you a gun now. So All right, do I get? Kevin, is this a quiz now? This is yeah. your quiz, sir. Okay. Okay. If you can Go get this, it. I'm gonna have to cover up a certain part of it, which is really not gonna make a big deal, but I am anyway. Okay. All right. So this gun is cleared. All right. So everybody, calm down. And here you are. Can you tell me what this is? I'll bring it closer to the camera. Oh, 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 oh. 
that's a that's a it's real a, old it looks like a real old colt but um uh hmm is it a colt i'm not getting it i gotta click on your picture over here so i get a better view okay hmm. uh, let's see here um, is it you a, see the slide long ways again too bad i can't read that thing there uh, uh, they're trying to be slick i know uh, <laughs> uh well it's so like it's a browning you're design saying not, you're saying it's not a coat yeah it's not a browning uh, i didn't uh, say it wasn't i just want to know exactly what it is okay it is a coat i'll give you that much 19, 1903 uh no not 1903 uh 1900 colt ah, oh, uh, almost what's in the middle <laughs> of the two numbers <laughs> they were close 1901 <laughs> come up it's, one more it's, 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 1902. 1902. 1902. 1902. What? what caliber is it? What is it shoot? Uh, uh, 38 special. 38. Uh, nine millimeter. 38 super. No. Nope. Oh damn. It's not That's nine. A, 380. Nope. No. Uh, <laughs> Walter was close, but not quite. Anybody in your feed taking a guess, Hank? Okay, let's out. see who. Let's see if you guys know. Uh, that's, that's, someone that's, says, "Is it a Takarev?" I don't know. No, 32? Is it thirty-two? It is a coat. It's a coat. It's, it's, okay. it's, so, it's, it's the model before the nineteen eleven. Yeah. Um, is it a thirty-two ACP? No, no it's bigger than thirty-two ACP. Oh my gosh! Thirty-eight oh, special. Yeah. Thirty-eight special. Thirty-eight long. Uh, oh hell! So we said forty-five, right? No, not, not forty-five. 45. Um. um no, it ain't twenty-five, Tyvin. There's is it no way. Is it fifty-seven? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, definitely not that. No. Uh, oh, you know my give up? Okay, yeah, I give. I up. give. I give. What's the caliber? Okay, this is a thirty-eight rimless smokeless. Okay. Rimless smokeless. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-eight rimless smokeless. It's, Which is that yours? Yeah, this is mine. Yeah. Okay. Is it like been in the family? Uh, no, weird story. I actually, and then I'm going to ask you guys what, what famous person got found with the full size version of this. Um, Al Capone? Nope. I actually had a student that came to a, a class and he was just like, hey, man, I got this, this gun that I've had for 40 years and my buddy gave me, he's an old guy. It's like, my buddy gave it to me 30 years and I kept it 40 years. I'm like, all right, let me look at it. And he tried to bring some 38 special ammo and load it and then shoot during the class. And I'm looking at the ammo and I'm looking at the gun. I'm like, yeah, you can't do that. And but it fit in the magazine, of course. I'm like, yeah, you'll blow, you can't do that, man. He's like, well, I can't get that ammo. So you you want it? And I wind up grabbing it from him for nothing. Uh uh, but yeah, the gun's well over a hundred years old. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So who was the famous person that had this? The full size version, though. Mm -hmm. Um the full size version of this gun um actually sold for, I believe it was slightly over a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. Uh, when Bonnie and Clyde were actually uh, caught, um, Bonnie was carrying the full size version, and the medical examiner kept it and then later sold it. Uh, okay, cool. That's cool. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, very much so. Rimless. So, so basically, is it's that like, ammo so out there? Um, I have a guy that can reload it. He can make yeah. it. Um, I nothing I, I've ever. I haven't really done a deep of a search. I'm be honest with you. And Walter, it's, this is a question for you. It's another reason why I'm teasing you with it. So. What would you say preserves the value? Would you say besides cleaning, would you do anything to it? Because obviously it's in rough condition, or would you leave it as is? Mm, it's like it is. is. Yeah. Yeah, that, that don't look that bad. Yeah. Trust me, that don't. That ain't yeah, it's that just bad. the thing. There's no morals in the metal. Yeah. And, I mean, you can still read the patent stamp and everything. Well, I'll see if you guys can see it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let me see if we can uh, we can lock it on you here. I can see something, but I can't see. Yeah. Yeah, but that's mm -hmm. not. Just leave it just like it is, you know. I mean, there I see is. a little bit, yeah, yeah, there a bit right there, yeah. So it's got the clear no. markings and stamps, and yeah, it's um, yeah, no, it, it's got a couple of striations, on, but it's it's good, you know. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't do anything to yeah. it. What's your what's your thing you were going to show, Walter? What were you showing? No, but I was going to say that that round is kind of like thirty eight super, because thirty eight super is rimless, but it's probably oh. it's probably shorter than thirty eight okay. super. Okay. Um, yeah. What was I going to show? Yeah, uh, uh, let's show some guns here now. I just want to remind everyone that's watching this to like like this video, you know, comments, of course, 
share it, let everyone know. If you're on uh, you know, Instagram or Twitter or whatever kind of social media you have, share it up. There was some um there was some hate last Friday on the SIG SIG stuff. Mm -hmm. Um this is a five five six that I bought. Um a few years back it had the I don't know if you guys are familiar with the five five six, but they originally came with a like a quad rail handguard made out of plastic. Okay. Kind of kind of fugly in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I went back to more of a military handguard and then you know it does this whole thing in the back, which I don't I'm not big fans of either, but at the time, that was the only one available, um, but um, it works good, in my opinion. I mean, why don't you like adjustable butt stocks? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'd rather have a folder. He's old school. Okay, yeah, there we go again. All Label right. it, people. Cool. You know, <laughs> you gotta put everybody in their in their place, don't you? <laughs> I don't like them, dar. Don't be New saying new adjustability stocks. All right, here back to the. Uh, <laughs> this is the um, this is the M um, 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 um. this is the M eighty five PAP, which is two twenty three. Okay, same cool. thing as that other one, but just in two twenty three. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let's. I love uh, the dust cover on that thing. Let's that lock is... that. Let's lock Walter in for a second. Hang Go on, ahead. No, show it, Walter. I just locked you in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there you go. You're showing the dust cover. Props up. That's one of the ways you know, right? Yep, yep. That's one of the ways. I just learned that today. Yep, <laughs> yep. Um, and that, like I said, the, the arrangement out front with the gas ports and stuff. Um, and this particular one has the receiver that has the bulges in it right over here. Oh, okay. It's kind of like an RPK. I don't know why they use that on the 556, but. So it's heavier? It's a yeah, heavier. It's a heavier so was this meant to be full auto? Um, yeah, there's a full auto version of this over overseas. Yeah, uh, it would come with a folding stock. Um, okay, but yeah, this would be what they kind of like what you call a crink. So if you take this and set it up next to um, baby faces, they would have some very similar um, attributes. Okay, that's so, really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Very, very nice. Very nice. Okay, I'm gonna show everyone the. Uh, here's the golden boy. You know, 22, specially engraved. Check that out. It's engraved. Oh, that's the... Look at that uh, engraving. It says the thousand man Ooh, shoot. It's serialized and everything. And this is this is the gun that I shot at the thousand man shoot. For anyone who doesn't know, it was more than a thousand guys. I think it was like a thousand thirty or something like that. We broke a world record, even though Guinness Book of World Records doesn't want to like recognize our authority and give us the credit for it. But we know we did it because we bunch were there. Of a bunch of nutty Englishmen, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Did all my English friends. Like but... Line up in a straight line and fire those at one time? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It was awesome. more than a thousand people out there. It was awesome. Great event. I hope Henry does it again. Henry is 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 really one of my favorite companies. Not just because they make like really nice uh quality things like this, but they're also real Second Amendment guys, very nice people over there. So there is the I don't know if I've shown it to anyone since the shoot. But they actually sent me the gun I used in the shoot, and you have that option. Some people just shot the gun. Some people got to buy the guns, mm. and then they sent it to you. The you know the NRA was doing all the safety stuff there. You know I've got my little sticker from the box and everything. You know I've got my certificate of authenticity in there. All that good stuff. So yeah, I don't. I don't show that up. History. Have, history. Uh, yes, I don't have a thousand man shoot, Henry, but I do have a couple of the Boy Scout, um, um, Eagle Scout rifles, and I have a couple of the, I think the hundredth anniversary of Scouts. They put out a special edition rifle too, so I got those from oh, Henry. Cool. So yeah, um, I believe that Henry's going to do this all over again. So sometime when they do this again, I'll try to keep everyone posted here. I am trying to get uh, the folks from Henry to come on and uh, talk to us about that kind of stuff when it when it goes down well, try to get them to come my, on my next gun isn't that cool uh, but i will show it doesn't have that kind of uh this one not the the tactical version of it but i do enjoy it i do love it and this is you can have fn in the scar it's the fn oh, yeah, um the fnx uh 45. that's a cool gun yeah, I really, I really, 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 really like this gun. If anybody's looking for 
you know, a full size 45. Now, you know, the tactical can run every bit of 12, 1300 bucks. But if you're just looking for a good, reliable, hard hitting 45, I have uh, two of my favorite 45s are this and my uh, Springfield Army five and a quarter. Uh, but this guy here is, is, I mean, it's just remarkable. So if you're looking for a good, solid 45, it shoots like a dream. I mean, it's got a manly grip on it. The release is big and sturdy. Um, it's it's just it's, it looks like it has the flared magwells. Uh, well, that's more the magazine. Oh, that is that the magazine? Or the, okay, yeah, no, that's magazine. okay. The magwells, isn't it? It looks like it's flared a little bit, but uh, it's a uh, it's okay. nice when you when you get. And I have pretty big hands, but this thing is so big where I don't. I normally cover up the magazine on pretty much any gun, mm -hmm. but not on this guy. Um, it's just good. It's beefy, but because it's so beefy, it shoots like a dream. Uh, I will highly recommend uh, this 45. Now you don't have to go out and get the tactical. I mean, the tactical does come with a very cool case. It comes yeah. with a weren't you the guy that was talking about how everyone went and bought the tactical stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just teasing you. <laughs> but thirteen hundred bucks. I mean, it's a, it's a. If you can afford it, yeah. If you just want a nice 45 from FN, um, maybe one to. Couple with something you carry. This is this is nice. I like this guy, you know. And I'm not a big fan of uh, you know, hammers and things like that. But when you shoot a good, good sturdy gun like this, you can appreciate everything about it. It's good, man. Something to put on your bucket list if you don't have a couple. Yeah, of that. yeah that's cool. Yeah, I like those. I'm yeah. pretty sure I've shot the uh, 45 tacticals. They are nice. Good. Yep. You know, the only thing that will be better is to get a threaded barrel and put a suppressor on there, Kevin. Yeah. I know, man. But you, uh, speaking of that, I don't mean, to I yeah, we got to get you into some suppressors. You know, and I, it's funny because now I, I, I got a guy that is going to supply me with some, and I'm going to actually uh, do a video using the, um, it's the Silencer Co. or the Silencer Shop. I think it's no, see, Silencer Co. They have a kiosk. I don't know if you guys ever seen them. Oh, that's Silencer Shop that has the kiosk. Yeah, Silencer Shop. Yeah. Yeah. We have one of those at the shop, so we're going to do a video where I'm going to put in. Um, I think I'm going to get a suppressor. In a couple of months, but that's just one. I can always use all the help and advice to get more. I just never really had, you know, it's one of them things when I started wanting to really play around with all the tax stamp stuff. I came along came these things called children. And, uh, <laughs> they yeah. just they just kind of took away from it, man. But, but now it's a good time. I mean, that's the one thing of what's going on. It is yeah, there's, there's a lot of deals out there on on cans too right now. So yeah, yeah, um, this is a good time. There's lots of good deals. Oh man, I'm trying to remember if uh, if anyone wants to, what is the name of this company? There's, I believe they're in Utah, but because they were on, um, they were on the late Boy Scouts channel. I saw this video where, uh, and I'm gonna try to pull it up here, but basically there's a suppressor company that if you buy the suppressor, if you buy any suppressor from them, they send you a $200 check in the mail what? Yeah, what? to pay for your tax stamp. Hold on, let me see. Oh, it was dear. on. This was on the late Boy Scout. Oh, Amtac. It's on, until October. So Amtac, which I think I believe they're in um, Utah. But if you go look on the late Boy Scout on his channel, there's a video called "Free Tax Stamp Amtac Fire Ant 22 Suppressor." But it's uh, and he shows the uh, the Fire Ant 22 from Amtac. But it's not just that. It's any suppressor from Amtac. If you buy it. Until October, oh, they up. send you. They send you the money. <laughs> They're gonna pay for your stamp, huh? Wow. Yeah, they send you the two hundred bucks so you can fill out your paperwork. Drop the two hundred bucks in there wow. and just send it off, and then wait the eleven, twelve months <laughs> to uh, get the paperwork back. So that's just you know, little tip for anyone out there. There's lots of deals going on like that right now. So yeah, you know, if you're really looking for a suppressor, anyone out there who is. You know, that's a good thing to do. Okay, I think we've been doing this for like two hours. We should probably yeah. wrap it up. Yeah, um, so. Kevin, what you got yeah. going on? What, what do you want to remind people of out there before we go here? Um, just, um, you know, keep keep up. I do have some exciting things uh, coming up soon. So, you guys, please go to uh, the Instagram. It's all down there, NOC Firearms Training, or Facebook, NOC Space Firearms Training, or on YouTube. I'm going to put out a bunch of... Of YouTube videos here in a while. Um, that's just NOC Firearms Channel on YouTube. So coming up, we have um, we'll be uh, documenting docu documenting uh, a lot of the manufacturers that are dealing with concealed carry and uh, personal protection options up at um, NRA Carry Guard. So we'll be traveling up there. 
Uh, we have, uh, I'm going to bring, be bringing, um, for anybody in the Midwest, or oh, you guys actually have them down there in Florida, too. Um, um, God, now they're, now they're escaping my mind. Um, got, I'll come back to them. Uh, early September, we'll be doing um, some shooting with uh, James Jager. Um, and then we'll be coming back doing some uh, uh, some shooting with a couple other guys. So we're going to have a lot of videos coming out. Um, what is it's going to bother? Asymmetric solutions. That's what it is. We're okay. going to be going down there. I know they're in Florida. And they have a uh, they have a location in Missouri, so they're, we're going to be documenting them doing um, some exciting things. They're going to do their tier one, like um, blowing doors and uh, rappelling out of helicopters and showing oh, cool. tactical entries and things like that. It's a free event they put on every year, so we're going to be documenting that. And I have a big machine gun shootout uh, that's going to be here in the Midwest, and I'll be bringing that. So we'll show you guys a bunch of um, uh, full auto machine guns, some fifty cal's, and guns. oh, cool. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking, you know, looking forward to uh, you coming back and talking about that. Of course, you're always welcome. I appreciate it. Come back and talk about that. And please subscribe to Kevin's channel, which is NOC Firearms Training, right? Yes, sir. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. And he's got a, he's got an interview with me. He's got a bunch of cool videos on there. You guys can check out. Walter. Yes, sir. What you got going on? Um, normal stuff. Facebook, Instagram, posting stuff. Um, just building stuff in the shop, you know, just trying yeah. to. Trying to stay solvent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't want to hear about you in uh, the truth oh, about guns I'll, or the firearm I'll, blog. That won't happen. I'll yeah, adapt. Like um, that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, yeah. It, it it has been slower, but you know, we're working on things. And um, there's there's if there's a will, there's a way, or or we say around here, if there's a will, there's a Peggy. Um, yeah. But <laughs> but um, we'll we'll figure it out one one way or another. So um, yeah. Even mm -hmm. if I, even if I gotta sell all my guns, I'll figure it out. So yeah. Wow. Before you disconnect, I do just want to tell you, it's not like I'm totally out of the suppressor market. Uh oh. I do have this uh -oh. guy here. Uh oh. This is my SIG Tac Ops uh, TB45. Uh, so my 1911. He's got uh, threads. And it is, as you can see, it's threaded. Threaded. It's, it's threaded. It's threaded. It's threaded threads. I am I am waiting to um to put something nice on this guy. But so don't be so uh, surprised if you don't see it with something on it. You know, well, in a year. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully sooner than that. Hopefully yeah, sooner than that. Yeah, and Walter and I, uh, for anyone who's listening, we've got some stuff coming out right now. I'm editing. Um, what am I working? Oh, the fire firepower rig from Andrew's Custom Leather. I'm working on that, Walter. Okay. Sounds so good. that's you know in the editing process. <laughs> so that might be a on challenging that. one, I think. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, I kind of put it on hold so I can get the iTunes up because what I do is I throw up five iTunes at a time. So we went from episode 26 to 30. And, and that's that's on iTunes for anyone looking to looking for those. Also, tomorrow, Lola wants me to remind you guys that we have the infamous Mike Deddy is coming on the show. OK, from uh, he's going to be live from Arizona. Mike Deddy is a person who wrote the book. Uh, guns across the border or operation wide receiver so very interesting story there regarding the ATF and uh, guns going across the border as you you know you guys know that that was a big thing and it's still actually being investigated although that's yeah. all that news is getting covered up <laughs> by whatever's whatever Russia supposedly did to yeah. our election so people aren't hearing about that but that's still very much in the news i think mike just had like a discover i think it was the discovery channel or someone was out at his place um oh. doing some stuff because that really is in the news we have a documentary with mike daddy that we're working on uh, along with all the other stuff so mike's going to come on and probably chastise me about that documentary <laughs> and what's going on with that so i invite everyone to check that out i want to thank our audience that's watching this right now everyone yeah. that came up with all the good questions comments all that kind of stuff i want to thank you guys i want to thank everyone that sponsors us including safety harbor firearms and, and walter keller and the rest of the family Rand clp and andrew's custom leather of course we cannot forget big daddy guns provides the studio here and the awesome people who sponsor us who take care of us on patreon we are patreon slash hank strange thanks for looking out for us there walter what is it what are you showing oh a little bit more of that little yeah. uh, 15 dollar can yep. yeah walter's showing his can oh. here you know what? <laughs> i'm keeping my can to myself yeah. sir <laughs> yeah walter's showing his can you got some something you yeah. want to show kevin 
Uh, no, just uh, well, I do want to show you the knife real quick, but just while I'm grabbing yeah. the knife, uh, Go ahead. I'll just got... I'll just thread on my suppressor, Kevin. Look at that. Just, okay, yeah, I'm just threading my suppressor on. Keep showing off, Hank. Keep you know, I mean, <laughs> you know. So I know you're a knife guy, but I uh, would like to <laughs> the audience while Hank is showing off the fact that he can actually <laughs> on a suppressor. Uh, um, uh -huh. Please uh, be looking out in October um, on Noir. Look out for me uh, uh, being featured on Noir. Uh, they just documented um, an event I did here in St. Louis. So for you guys who tuned in late, make sure you stay uh, tuned to NRA TV and Coleon's show, and you will see my beautiful face on there. Absolutely. And, um, this oh. thing. Oh, knife, knife, Ooh, knife should come out. Knife. That's so shiny. I have, look, I have no idea what to do with it, but I have it. Beautiful knife. That's a hog sticker, man. That's what I got it for. Well, you got to you you jump in there and stick that hog, man. Uh, that's a serrated it, edge. After I shoot it, I will definitely stab it. Oh, you got to get it before <laughs> that. Oh, man. I'm not, I'm not as brave as you. Uh, it, wasn't, it, it, it wasn't bravery. It just happened. So. <laughs> Oh yeah, I bought this. I told you when I got the like the whole hog setup, and I just haven't got to a hog yet. Oh, when to get to there it? There you go. You, you can use that to cut yourself up, and make a sandwich with it, then. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful knife. That's a beautiful knife. Yep, yep. Okay, I'm gonna go out. You know, big shout out to. Oh yeah. Rebel silencers. Yeah. Rebel silencers. There's a whole bunch of these going out across the nation right now. So rebel silencers. There you yeah. go. Rebel Silencers, that was a great uh make great it pew pew guys. a little bit quieter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good good promotion there, Rebel. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? Is that over? Um, I'm not sure if it's over or not. Um, I know that they're now going out. It may be still going. We'll have to check all we'll check on that and if so we'll put something. But you guys can also check out Rebel Silencers. Uh they've got a bunch of social media and they're online to see what they have going. If they don't have that, they probably have some other special going on. Cool. Okay. All right. All right man. Let's throw up the twos. Peace. Peace out, people. Peace.